Introduction to Tianyuan Immortal Record He was determined to join the immortal sect but had no way to join. When he completely gave up, he coincidentally joined the immortal sect. As a small person in the martial arts world, there is no soul-stirring experience, and as an ordinary person, the cultivation record is not about maintaining righteousness. Chapter 1 Tang Lu Village Youth You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. As the setting sun sets in the west, the children's laughter and scolding in the peaceful small village rise one after another. With the cries and scolding of their parents, they each stop and return home. The smoke from the kitchen rises, and the flowing water under the ancient bridge flows gently. The willows on the riverbank gently caress the water surface. Not far away is an endless wheat field. It is the autumnal equinox season, and the fiery red wheat surface grows vigorously. The breeze blows, raising a wave of wheat waves. This is a village in the southern part of the state of Chu. As the people in the village are all surnamed Tang and Lu, they call it Tang Lu village. The wheat and rice grown in the endless wheat fields outside the village are not ordinary wheat and rice, but rather Lingmai, also known as Xingu. What? Xingu is not for ordinary people to eat, but specifically for the adults of the Xianjia family. Therefore, the land is fertile, and the air and soil contain a large amount of fire element, making it very suitable for growing spiritual wheat. Therefore, this type of wheat valley is planted all over a radius of 50 miles. What? The immortal valley produces results every three years, and when the results are ripe, the adults of the immortal family come to collect them. Each grain of immortal valley contains a large amount of energy. If a person with a thin and weak body accidentally eats it, it can cause illness and pain, and in severe cases, it can explode and die. What? Although Tanglu village belongs to the territory of Chu state, it is not under the jurisdiction of Chu state and is under the jurisdiction of Chini sect. What? Chini sect is one of the top immortal sects in the state of Chu, capable of competing with the Chu royal family. The area around Tanglu village, which is 500 miles away, is under the control of Chini sect. The people here have a sense of awe, longing, and gratitude towards Chini zone. Chieni Zong not only exempted everyone from taxes in the village, but also gave a lot of silver every year to provide food and clothing for the people of Tanglu village. What? Not only Tanglu village, but all the areas under the jurisdiction of Chieni sect have been exempted from taxation. It's just that Tanglu village has been granted an additional annual subsidy of silver due to its cultivation of spiritual wheat. What? It is now the autumnal equinox season, and in one or two months, the elders of the Chieni sect's immortal family will come here to harvest the immortal valley. What? Every household in Tanglu village has hidden a lot of immortal valleys for their own consumption. The Chieni sect never cares about these, as long as they can harvest the immortal valleys on time. Tang Ning sat under the old locust tree in his own yard, his clothes soaked with sweat. Today is the last day of the month, and there is a tradition in Tanglu village that no one needs to work on the last two days of each month, just rest well. For a child as old as him, the rest days were naturally spent playing with his friends to the fullest. He had been playing all day since the morning and had just been called back by Tang's mother to eat. Tomorrow we have to work again. Tang Ning looks at the blue sky with great reluctance. He is nine years old this year, and his appearance is quite beautiful. He looks a bit thin and weak, but despite his appearance, his body is actually in good condition. Growing up eating snacks in the immortal valley, I have never been sick and my strength is much greater than that of children of the same age outside. Xiaoning, it's time for dinner, Tang's mother shouted in the room what? Tang Ning quickly ran in. For nothing else, there was meat to eat today. During the last two days of each month, Tang's mother would make some delicious treats to reward the hard-working family. What? Before he could even enter the house, a scent of rabbit meat reached his nose, which was what Tang's father had done up the mountain yesterday. As soon as you hear that eating and running are faster than anyone else, look at you. 
sweating all over, you know you're just playing around and don't know how to chop firewood. Tang Mu complained, but her eyes were full of indulgence. What? Tang Ning has no brothers and sisters. He is the only child in the family. Tang's mother bled heavily when giving birth to him, and almost had an accident. Fortunately, the midwife was a very experienced veteran who successfully gave birth, but also fell ill and could not have another child. What? Tang's father sat at the door smoking a big cigarette. He was very addicted to smoking and felt uncomfortable every day without smoking two bags. Due to years of hard work, he looked like a person in his thirties, even his hair turned white. Dad, it's time for dinner, Tang Ning shouted from the stool in front of the table. You eat first. I'm not hungry, Tang Fu said without looking back what? What? Tang Ning couldn't help but pick up the dishes and start with a clatter. He ate three bowls in a row and even took a full break after finishing. Eat slowly, no one is competing with you, Tang Mu said with a smile, touching his head. Cough, I've made an agreement with your sixth uncle. He's familiar with the immortal envoy and the year after tomorrow, let him take you to meet the immortal envoy and then go to the Luoyun mountain range. Tang Fu walked over and coughed twice, saying that it might be because he had been smoking heavily for years. He has developed a cough problem, sometimes coughing quite badly. Ah! Tang Mu's face darkened as she whispered, the child is okay. What's so small? Did he miss this opportunity next time? Cough! 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 Tang Fu was a bit angry and coughed loudly after speaking. What? Tang's mother immediately went over and gently patted his back with her hand. What? Upon hearing Tang's father's words, Tang Ning felt mixed emotions, including anticipation, discomfort, and reluctance. What? But Tang Ning is the only son in his family. He bid farewell to the mortal world upon entering the Chini sect. Even if the family prospers, what is the use of it what? The Chieni sect opens the mountain gate once every ten years, and the first requirement for recruiting disciples is to meet their age limit, which must be between six and sixteen years old, so each person only has one chance in their lifetime. If you're full, go wash yourself and sleep first. Your mother and I, cough. Talk to you about something. Oh, Tang Ming nodded and stood up to go outside to fetch water and take a shower. Starting from today, the child's daily food should be better, including the cost of traveling to the Luoyun Mountains. And Uncle Lu's place should not be too, we now have. From the last time Erden. Uncle Dashin. I'll tell him. What? Tang Ming heard the faint voices of his father and mother in the courtyard, and his heart was filled with immense melancholy, as if something precious had fallen. What? After taking a shower, I returned to my room and lay down on the bed, thinking about what my father had said. The year after tomorrow, I went to the Luoyun Mountains with my sixth uncle. Where is the Luoyun Mountains? What kind of people are there? After I go there, can I also be like the adults of those immortal families? But what should I do if I go there? What? I haven't been out of the village since I was so old. Are the people outside the village very vicious? Will my parents miss me when I leave? And Ru Ru what? Tang Ming fell into a deep sleep thinking about these things in his heart. What? The next day, just before dawn, Tang Ming woke up with a rooster crowing. He got out of bed and went outside to chop the grass. After chopping the grass, he put it in a basin and carried it to the pigsty. There were three pigs in the pigsty, which were their most valuable treasures. The three pigs were two males and one mother, and the whole family was looking forward to this mother pig giving birth. What? He put the fodder into the pigsty, washed his hands and came to the house. The table was already set with bowls and chopsticks. The breakfast was the same as before, porridge and mantu. But when he came to the table, he found that there was an extra egg today. What? 
He remembered Tang's father and mother talking yesterday, and felt a pang of sadness in his heart. What? At this time, Tang's parents had already gone to see the Immortal Valley. The Immortal Valley was good and good, but it was very difficult to raise and very delicate. They had to water and fertilize it regularly every day. It is even more important to prevent animals from stealing food. If animals peck at the Immortal Valley, not only will the valley be damaged, but they will also die suddenly. Even people with weak physique cannot bear it, let alone animals. The Immortal Valley, which was divided into three acres of land for Tang's father in the village, was assigned to his family for care. For the people in the village, taking care of the Immortal Valley is a top priority and must not be careless. After finishing the meal, Tang Ning changed into sneakers, carried a basket on his back, and put a firewood knife in the basket, running all the way to the neighbor Lu Erbwa's house. Ru Ru, Ru Ru, have you finished yet? Tang Ning shouted loudly what? Before long, a little girl ran out of the room and came to him. The little girl was very beautiful, with willow eyebrows, big eyes, a small nose, and a cherry mouth. Her skin was fair as snow, like a porcelain doll carved in powder. She also carried a small basket on her back. What? The little girl's name is Lu Ruin. She has been playing with Tang Ning since childhood. The relationship between the two in the village is the best, and the relationship between Tang and Lu fathers is also very good. Another thing that must be said is that the little girl is Tang Ning's fiancé A.E. The two of them were arranged to be in-laws, and Lu Ruin was a few months younger than Tang Ning. At that time, when Tang and Lu were pregnant, the two families agreed that if it was a man and a woman, they would be arranged to be in-laws. The people in the village don't have any complicated matters, such as documents or treaties. Anyway, what they say is just a matter of counting, a matter of red mouth and white teeth. Maybe it's jealousy of beauty. Lu Ruin looks amazing. In the village, both adults and children say that this child is the best looking and has a gentle temperament. But from the beginning of her life, she was mute and couldn't speak. She had invited several doctors outside to see her, but they all said she couldn't cure it. She also had an older brother who died young at the age of three, so Lu Erbwa treated Tang Ning very well and treated him like a son. Let's go. Tang Ning took her small hand and walked back towards the mountain. Their task today is to go up the mountain to chop firewood and pick some fruits. Tang Ning has been following his father up the mountain to chop firewood and hunt since he was young. Although the mountain road is rugged, it is familiar to him and he cannot be more familiar with it. What? Tang Ning held her hand and hummed a tune gently all the way, his footsteps light and fast, while Lu Ruin followed behind him calmly. The warm sunshine shone through the leaves on their small bodies, and Yu Yu reading was full of peace and tranquility. What? After walking for a while, the two of them came to the bottom of a pear tree. Tang Ning unloaded the basket and climbed up with both hands holding onto the branches, saying, Ru Ru, you continue to click below. What? Lu Ruin stood under the tree holding a basket in both hands. Tang Ning picked the pears from the branch one after another, and Lu Ruin walked left and right to put them into the basket one by one. After folding this one, Tang Ning climbed onto another tree trunk and picked the pears from this branch. He continued to pick three or four branches and climbed down. There are already more than ten pears in the basket, and the two of them leaned against the big tree and chewed on one. Tang Ning carried the basket and continued on. After walking for a while, he arrived at his usual place of chopping firewood and took out his chopping knife to chop down a tree. Lu Ruin also took out his knife to chop down another tree. What? In no time, two trees fell down. Tang Ning cut off the branches and then cut the trunk into several pieces and put them in a basket. He cut down several trees in a row, and the basket was full before he stopped. At this moment, he was already sweating profusely. Lu Ruin is also sweating profusely. After all, she is still two children and works independently. 
It's strange not to be tired. Ru Ru, take a break and let's go back. Tang Ming took out two pears and handed one to Lu Ruin. The two leaned against a tree, nibbling on pears and resting. Halfway through the meal, Lu Ruin pulled his finger and pointed to the grass on his left. Without her reminder, Tang Ning also heard it, as if something was ringing. The noise grew louder and louder, and Tang Ning felt something was wrong. It didn't sound like a human voice. He stood up holding Lu Ruin's small hand, while the other hand picked up a firewood knife and looked cautiously at the jungle. Chapter 2 Changes You are listening at NovelFull.audio Listening to a loud scream, a large wild boar jumped out of the bushes, with bright red blood stains on its body. Unexpectedly, Tang Ning immediately pulled Lu Ruin and ran back. The injured wild boar would become extremely wild and crazy, and if it caught a person, it would generally not stop dying. The wild boar let out a loud roar and chased in the direction of the two. The two were running in front, while the wild boar chased behind. Tang Ming's direction changed from time to time. When being chased by fierce beasts, be sure not to run in a straight line, as it will soon be caught up with. This is what Tang Fu had told him before. Tang Ning pulled Lu Ruin to turn left and right, but how could the speed of the two children match that of a wild beast? The distance was getting closer and closer, and he was also panicking and unable to distinguish direction. As the wild boar was about to catch up, Tang Ning suddenly felt a strong force behind her. Before she could figure out what was going on, the person fell down. It turned out that while running, Lu Ruin accidentally slipped and stepped into the air, rolling down the mountain. Unfortunately, she was also mute and couldn't make a sound. Tang Ning was originally holding her hand, but she naturally took her down. The two of them rolled down the mountain, and in a panic, Tang Ning hugged her body tightly, rolling faster and farther. In the midst of stumbling, the person quickly lost consciousness. Blood flowed from the head, slid over the face, passed through the neck, and onto the jade pendant on the neck. The jade pendant emitted a green light that enveloped the two bodies. Why is it already time for dinner? The child hasn't come back yet. The child's father, shouldn't anything happen? Tang Mu spoke with a worried expression on her face Tang's father frowned and smoked heavily, I don't think so. Cough cough cough. The child is not going up the mountain for the first time, he goes every day. What can happen? Maybe he picked many delicious fruits on the mountain, so he forgot the time happily. I'll wait for a while, and if I don't come back, I'll go look for them. Yushan, Yushan. Lu's father's anxious shout came from outside the door, and as soon as he finished speaking, he had already arrived in front of Tang's father and mother. Has Xianing come back? No, why is Ru Ru also missing? Tang's father frowned even tighter, yeah. I just asked around and someone saw two children go up the mountain but haven't come back yet. What if something happens? Father Lu crossed back and forth, looking bewildered. Let's go up the mountain and look for it now, Tang Fu couldn't sit still and immediately stood up and said Tang Ning opened her eyes in a daze and saw Lu Ruin wiping away her tears on the side. Her teary face was both worried, scared, and bewildered. It was truly a pity to see her. Ru Ru. Tang Ning shouted and sat up. Seeing him wake up, Lu Ruin's eyes lit up, she stopped crying, and kept gesturing something. At this moment, the sun had already set in the west, and Tang Ning noticed that his face was wet and greasy. He wiped it with his hand, eh. There were bloodstains, but I didn't feel any pain. I looked at my body again and it was strange. There were no scars on my body. How could it be like this? I fell from such a high mountain and didn't get hurt. Looking at Lu Ruin again, there are no scars on her body. What place is this? I've never been there before. Surrounded by towering trees, Tang Ning stood up and took Lu Ruin's hand, saying, let's find a way back. The sun has already set, and it won't be good when it gets dark. The two of them wandered around in the woods, 
but couldn't find their way back. The sky gradually darkened, and as night fell, Tang Ning felt a bit hungry. He wanted to go home but couldn't see the way clearly. He was very scared and worried in his heart. He didn't know how his parents were doing now. He hasn't returned home yet, so his parents must be going crazy. Gulu Gulu, a growl came from Lu Ruin's stomach. Tang Ning held her hand and said, We won't go back today. We can't see anything now. Let's find a place to spend the night first. Under the moonlight, the two of them arrived at a large rock and leaned against it. Lu Ruin leaned against him, sniffing and secretly wiping away tears. Tang Ning was also very afraid in her heart, not knowing what would happen next. The wind blew and the leaves rustled, adding a hint of eerie and eerie atmosphere. Tang Ning hugged her in his arms and said, All right, stop crying. My parents will definitely come back to find us. Maybe they will find us soon. Lu Ruin lay in his arms, her little nose still twitching. Two small bodies hugged each other, and soon fell into a deep sleep. On the other side, the lights were brightly lit up and down the mountain, and the crowd surged, shouting their names loudly. In the afternoon, Father Tang and Father Lu searched for an hour without finding any trace of them. After confirming that the two children had an accident, Lu's father went down the mountain and told the village chief, Uncle Lu. Uncle Lu immediately arranged for more than ten people to go up the mountain together to find them, but they couldn't find them until evening. Uncle Lu then sent people to go door dot to dot door and notify the people in the village, asking adults from each household to prepare torches to search up the mountain in the evening. Xiao Ning, Xiao Ning, Tang Mu shouted loudly, holding a torch and tearing her heart apart, Xiao Ning, Ru Ru, Xiao Ning, Ru Ru. Shouts echoed from the top and bottom of the mountain the moon hung on the branches, and a dozen figures suddenly appeared in the wheat field. Let's do it, said the leader calmly, waving his hand, and the dozen or so people immediately dispersed. Ah! The woman behind her suddenly let out a sharp scream, startling everyone, showing, why? Tang Mu turned around and before she could finish speaking, her skull was attached to her neck. Click wipe. With a crisp sound, Tang Mu's neck was bitten off in one bite, and her body collapsed straight down, ah. Ah. What thing? Ah. Lotus, I'll fight with you. Xiener, run. Run. Mother, mother. Screams and roars accompanied by the helpless cries of the child echoed throughout the village. I really don't know what the master wants us to do, just send a few kids, really, said a person in the wheat field with a mocking smile a blood-red crow silently attached itself to Tang Ning and pecked it down. Sharp teeth had just scratched the skin, and the jade pendant on the neck emitted a green glow. The crow seemed to have received some kind of fright, and with a swift flutter of its wings, it left. The screams, roars, and cries gradually stopped, and the small village returned to tranquility. Senior uncle, I have searched everywhere but haven't found anything. I knew it was a wasted trip, how could it be? The relics of the rain and dew old man will be on this group of mortals. Don't complain, this is the news that the master spent a lot of effort to find out. The people here are likely descendants of the rain and dew old man. Even if it's true, it's been so many years now, there's nothing left behind. Master, this person. It's like listening to the wind and rain. It's hard for me to say whether there's the character of Yulu old man or not. Otherwise, why wouldn't he come to do such a good thing himself? Let the master know that you're saying this behind your back, and see if we'll give you some hard work. All right, senior brother, let's go back. The leader nodded and was about to speak when his eyes suddenly froze and his figure flashed into mid-air. A giant sword weighing over ten zhang fell from the sky and slashed at the man with an unstoppable momentum. With a pang sound, a pair of white bones appeared above the man's head blocking the giant sword, and the tremendous force pushed him down from mid-air. The others had not yet understood what was going on, and their bodies turned into pillars of ice, with a thick layer of ice covering an area of fifty meters underground. 
Two of them shook their bodies and immediately soared into mid-air when their legs were frozen. A woman in white appeared on the ice, with her left hand raised and her index and middle fingers tied side by side. The body of a dozen or so people who had been frozen into pillars of ice immediately split apart. The man in mid-air had a skeleton on his head and a giant sword in his hand, his body constantly pressing down towards the ground. Just as their feet touched the ground, they immediately formed an ice layer. Ha! The man shouted loudly. The red light in the skull's eyes flashed, and the ice layer melted away one after another the man vigorously pushed the giant sword open and soared into mid-air. A man in green appeared next to the woman in white on the ice, standing side by side with her. Iron Bone Technique, People from the Blood Bone Sect How dare they do evil within the jurisdiction of the Chieni sect, said the man in green, humph, the empty man snorted coldly, transforming into a group of blood crows and flying away in all directions. Seeing him leave like this, the other two changed their faces. In the next moment, they both ran away in two directions, east and west. The woman in white had her hands imprinted and condensed into a hexagonal ice crystal in mid-air, freezing a man. Click, click, the ice crystal slowly cracked open, and blood mist drifted out of the ice crystal and condensed back into the person's appearance. At this moment, his face was extremely pale, and before he could fully recover, a three-foot red sword passed through his chest with lightning speed. The man endured the pain and made a mark on his hands. While reading, he saw blood burst in mid-air, transforming into a beam of blood and heading towards the distance. The man in green frowned and said, These people from the demon sect indeed have strange martial arts. They can still escape like this, but after receiving my deadly sword, they can no longer survive. Aren't you going to chase after me? Forget it. Their cultivation and techniques are not inferior to ours. Since they choose to escape without fighting, there may be someone from them in front who will intentionally lead us over, why did they come here with their cultivation just to slaughter a group of mortals? This matter is a bit strange. Let's report it to the sect when we go back. First, let's check if there are any survivors around and ask about the situation. The woman in white nodded, and the two of them turned into hiding lights and left. After a long time, they appeared again in the wheat field the man in green shook his head and said, there are no survivors within a radius of ten miles. Let's go. This mission is a bit tight. At the top of the misty mountain peak, a man raised his legs and said, what bad luck. It's so coincidental to have met someone from the Chini sect. We should have passed by, otherwise it wouldn't have been so easy for us to get away. Yeah. However, senior brother Tai, why did we escape with your skills? Didn't you also escape? Iron Painted Bones glanced at him deeply, with your skills, there's no need to escape. The person smiled and said, how can I compare to senior brother Tai? It's just that I've suffered a lot from senior brother Shi. I don't know if he can escape. I seem to see him trapped by the people of the Chini sect. As the two spoke, a figure fell from mid-air onto the mountaintop, covering his chest with bloodstains and a painful expression on his face. Senior brother, help. Help me. The man surnamed Tai walked up to him and said, the injury is too serious. It's better for me to end your pain after a fight with fellow disciples. Chapter 3 Streets You are listening at NovelFull.audio the bright red blood stained the land and flowed towards the low dot lying area. The former junior brother under his feet was nowhere to be seen, with his eyes wide open and his iron painted face expressionless as he looked at the head in front of him. Yo, senior brother, you killed junior brother Shi. How can you explain it to master now? He is the master's favorite disciple. The other man next to him had a mischievous smile on his face, did I kill it? Didn't you? Iron painting bones didn't respond, ha ha ha. The man laughed a few times and said, Senior brother, don't be angry. Just now, junior brother, I was just joking. Junior brother she was ambushed by people from the Chini sect and unfortunately died. 
What we should think about now is how to comfort his master's family after returning to the sect, after all, junior brother Shi is the only direct descendant of his family. You don't have to worry about it anymore. As the senior brother, I have an inescapable responsibility and will naturally apologize to my master. Senior brother, there's no need to underestimate yourself. I don't think the master will blame you too much. The other party's cultivation is far superior to yours and me. This situation is probably unavoidable for anyone. Iron painted bones remained silent, and the man continued, I heard that the master gave you a black scale armor. The master's preference for you is really envious of us junior brothers. If you like it, give it to you. Iron Skeleton flipped his right hand and a pair of black, scaly armor appeared in his hand, throwing it to the man the man took the armor and smiled, thank you, senior brother. Let's go. Don't let the master wait for too long. The wine and meat in Jumen smell bad, and there are frozen bones on the road. The cold wind howls, snowflakes fly, and pedestrians on the street are all holding their coats and shrinking their bodies. Occasionally, a few fast horses rush by. As the new year approaches, every household is busy buying New Year's goods. Small households chop meat to the east and fish to the west, rushing forward in the snow with full loads of goods in their hands, while large households ride horses and pull mules without hesitation. Go away, little beggar, don't stand in front of my shop, it's affecting my customers' lives. A man shouted and cursed in front of his own shop door the boy who was scolded quickly left, his body looking a bit thin and weak, disheveled and disheveled, dressed in rags, dragging his feet, holding his body tightly with both hands, trembling in the snow. The little boy is Tang Ning, the survivor of Tang Lu village. From the second day he fell into the valley, his life underwent a huge change. Dead people, bloodstains, and gnawed corpses in Manshan. I have forgotten how I walked out of the valley, the mountain I walked out of, and the village I walked out of. I don't want to recall, I dare not, but every day I vividly dream of that scene. My father, who has been drained of blood and only has skin and bones left, my mother, who has been gnawed off half of her neck, Uncle Lu, who only has half of his head left, as well as Uncle Tang Wu, Uncle Lu Si, and Uncle Lu in the village what happened. There are no living animals in the village. Dogs, chickens, crows, geese, and even the three pigs in the pigsty have been drained of blood, leaving only a pair of bones and skin. His body was very cold and hungry, and he wanted to collapse like this. He closed his eyes and didn't open them anymore, as if he had a dream, but there was something in his heart that kept supporting him. He wanted to know what exactly happened I don't know how long he had been walking, but he looked up and saw a luxurious restaurant in front of him. From time to time, laughter and curses could be heard inside. After hesitating for a moment, he walked inside. What are you doing? This is not where you can come. Before taking that step, the two big men at the door pushed him away, and the tremendous force made him involuntarily somersault. I, I want to order something. My sister is sick, he said timidly as he got up and lowered his head, get out of here. A big man kicked him in the stomach and kicked him away. If you go inside again, you stinky beggar, don't even look where this is. Dare to come here and beg for food. He covered his stomach and rolled twice, struggling to get up. Not yet. The man came up and kicked him in the body. This kick kicked him whole, flying one or two feet away, and his body lay on the ground motionless. Next time you dare to walk inside, I'll see if I don't kill you. The big man said fiercely after an unknown amount of time, he slowly stood up with his hands propped up on the ground and walked forward with his body bowed. After walking for a while, a man carrying a burden came to his face. A foot away, Tang Ning could smell a fragrance, the scent of scallion pancakes. His throat rolled involuntarily, and the two of them passed by, rolling several times. Hey, are they scallion pancakes? Give me a few, a person from behind suddenly shouted, yeah, replied the man next to him, I can smell the fragrance from a long distance, give me five. The person behind walked quickly. 
The man put down the burden, opened the curtain, and took out five yubing, deep dot fried round and flat dough dot cake, to the man. Downing's eyes drifted, and his uncanny hands reached over, grabbed several pieces with both hands, and ran away. Hey, stop! The man shouted and immediately chased after him. He ran desperately, but was soon caught up and pinned to the ground. You are a beggar who will never die, rob me of my things. The man said as he went to take the cake in his arms. Tang Ning lay on the ground and held the yubing, deep dot fried round and flat dough dot cake, in his arms. The man had no choice but to get up, punch and kick him, while drinking and cursing. Tang Ning held on to him tightly but didn't let go. The man paused for a while and said, forget it, if I want to kill you, I still have to be sentenced. It's my misfortune. Tang Ning stood up slowly as he walked away, taking out the scallion pancake from his arms, intact and still warm. At this moment, he felt a lot of pain on his body and a burning pain on his forehead. He endured these pains and quickly walked forward. After walking for a while, he arrived at a dilapidated temple. Inside, there were more than ten people lying horizontally and vertically, all dressed in rags. Tang Ning walked straight to a corner where a little girl with the same unkempt hair and face was lying there, her eyes fixed on the entrance of the temple. Her previously lifeless big eyes lit up a lot when she saw him. Ruru, look, there's something to eat. Tang Ning took out the scallion pancake from her arms, helped her up, tore off a piece, and fed it to her mouth. The girl took a bite, and Tang Ning tore another piece and handed it to her mouth. She watched as she finished the whole piece and picked up a wooden ladle next to her to scoop up a bucket of water and deliver it to her mouth. After feeding her, Tang Ning started to nibble on her own. The two of them have been begging along the way since they left the village, and it has been three months now. Since the beginning of winter, the weather has become colder and colder. A few days ago, Lu Ruin's body finally couldn't eat and fell ill. If this continues, she may not be able to survive this winter. Along the way, Tang Ning also met many people who were suffering from hunger and cold like them, many of whom closed their eyes and never opened them again. The fact that the two of them have been able to resist until now may be related to eating Immortal Valley since childhood, as their bodies are slightly better than ordinary people. Six scallion pancakes were quickly eaten by the two of them, and they had not eaten anything for a day. These few pancakes slightly relieved their hunger. Tang Ning hugged Lu Ruin in her arms, leaning against her body to keep warm. A woman's gentle crying came from beside her. Tang Ning turned her head and saw a woman with her back to them, holding an object in her hands and gently twitching her body. This woman came here with them, begging along the way. She has a child who is two or three years old and fell ill a few days ago. She didn't cry much, but Tang Ning could feel the silent sadness and despair. From her crying, Tang Ning inferred that her child had left. Perhaps it was unbearable, or perhaps it was a tragic death of a rabbit and a fox. Tang Ning couldn't help but shed tears. The child who left today may be himself tomorrow, but when he left, and his mother was sad, who would care if he left Lu Ruin huddled in his arms, saw him crying, and lifted her little hand to wipe him. Tang Ning looked at her weak appearance and felt even more afraid, afraid that one day she would no longer open her eyes and leave herself alone. The dozen or so people in this temple are all old, weak, sick, and disabled. He has seen most of them begging all the way to this place. Originally, there were more than thirty people, but for various reasons, only these dozen or so people arrived here. This place is called Nansha County, and the reason why everyone comes here is because the governor of this place is a well-known good person from afar. He is benevolent, loving, upright, and wise. Under his rule, the people of Nansha County live and work in peace and contentment. In such a world, this place is undoubtedly a place of hope for people like them who have no home to return to. They have been here for more than ten days. There is a great philanthropist named Sunir here who is philanthropic. Every day, he will provide kanji meals to people like them. But these two days, 
because of the snow, he didn't give any more. Tang Ming hugged Lu Ruin tightly. He actually had a destination in his heart, but he had not yet found where that place was. He had asked many people along the way, but no one knew where that place was, and many people had not even heard of it. But he knew he had to go to that place, the Luoyun Mountains. Only by going there can he know what exactly happened in the village, and only by going there can he possibly seek revenge. Overnight, the village was completely slaughtered, and there were also those tragic and strange corpses that were not something ordinary people could do. Only the legendary immortal masters had this power. As night gradually fell and the sky darkened, the temple was very quiet. The hardships and hardships of survival had made the people here numb. Naturally, they would not be as happy as ordinary people outside, let alone laughing and cursing. Only the woman was still gently crying. The next morning, just as the sky turned white, Tang Ning opened her eyes and gently lifted Lu Ruin's hands that were holding her body. Yu Yu read a book www.yuukangshu.net and withdrew to leave. The weather seems nice today, at least the snow has stopped, but the chill has become even stronger. The days after heavy snow are always particularly cold. He walked forward with his thin body in his arms. I don't know whether Su the philanthropist opened kanji for charity today. It's about Mausher. Although Su's family supplies kanji on time every morning, he needs to queue up early, or he may not be able to queue up and receive kanji rice. After walking four or five miles, Tang Ning arrived at the Su family's charity point. He sat down against a corner of the wall, which was relatively warm and could withstand some cold wind. There were already more than ten people waiting here, all ragged beggars, huddled in a place and waiting. As time passed, more and more people came here, and the original dozen or so people quickly became one or two hundred. Here we go, here we go. The sound came from somewhere, and then the crowd began to surge, forming a long queue. Seven or eight people dressed in yellow walked ahead, holding large wooden barrels. These people walked up to the high platform, put down their tools, and then began to tidy up. The people below looked at them eagerly. After a while, the person above walked forward and said, All right, now everyone is queuing up, coming one by one. Don't argue, don't grab, everyone has a share. We are from the Su family of Su Wenlin and we come at this time every day. Downing followed the team and moved forward a little bit. After the people in front had all received the kanji rice, he took out a wooden ladle with his right hand and stretched it out. The man who served kanji took a porcelain bowl and poured it into his ladle. Downing took out another wooden ladle with his left hand. The man who served kanji glanced at him. I, I also have a younger sister, Tang Ning whispered with her head down the man continued to load him with a ladle, thank you, big brother. Tang Ning said and left the team. Chapter 4 Fan Pei You are listening at NovelFull.audio Downing sat at the corner of the wall and ate her share, then closed the two wooden ladles, held them in his hands and walked quickly to the temple. The weather was cold. If the kanji rice was cold, then her body was sick again. He lowered his head and tightly held the wooden ladle. Bold. A snap came from the ear, and then a strong attack came. The body could not help flying out, banging on the ground, the wooden ladle rolled out, and kanji rice spilled on the ground. Downing quickly climbed over, gathered the kanji rice on the ground, picked it up with both hands, and put it in the wooden ladle bit by bit. Boldly. With another loud shout, Tang Ning's body sank downwards, with one foot resting on his back. Wang Dutu, what's up? Another voice rang out, Sir, there is a little beggar blocking the way. Tang Ning secretly lifted his head and saw a fiery red sedan chair lying horizontally in front. Inside, a person lifted the curtain and was looking at him. The person was about thirty or forty years old, with a dignified demeanor and great elegance. The person waved at him and said, Come over. The man on his back let go of his feet, and Tang Ning got up, holding a wooden ladle and walking over with his head down. He was very flustered and a bit scared, 
not knowing what to do. Where are you from? The person asked. The villain is from Tanglu village, Anning County. Tang Ning replied softly, Why are you from Anning County here? Are your parents safe? My parents were killed, and when they followed them here, they said there was food to eat. Ah, the man sighed and said, The people are wandering, and the young children are turbulent. It's a lack of royal way. Wang Dutu, find a place to settle this son. Sir, this. The man next to him looked embarrassed, I have taken on the responsibility of educating and educating the people, and have always guided them with benevolence and righteousness as their foundation. Now that some people are poor and unable to make a living, how can we ignore them? The person seemed quite dissatisfied with the attitude of the man. Yes, sir. This matter must be handled properly, the person said, pulling down the curtain and slowly raising the sedan chair as they walked away. When the sedan chair left, the man walked up to Tang Ning and said, Kid, you're lucky. Come with me. I still have a younger sister. Can we take her with us? The man frowned and impatiently shouted, Just leave when you're asked. What are you talking about? Do you think we specialize in raising beggars? Well, forget it, I won't go. Tang Ning was startled by his drink and whispered he certainly cannot leave Lu Ruin alone there, she is his only relative. Eh. The man was a bit surprised, I didn't expect you to be quite kind-hearted. Forget it, just bring one with you. Thank you, thank you, Tang Ning exclaimed with joy upon hearing these words. All right. What are you thanking me for? If you want to thank me, thank Lord Shen. I'm just following orders. If I don't want to meddle in this kind of business. The two of them arrived at the temple, and Tang Ning walked into Lu Ruin's side, gently pushing her. Lu Ruin slowly opened her eyes, and at this moment her expression was very weak, with a weak and powerless appearance. Ruru, let's go. Tang Ning whispered Lu Ruin nodded. Tang Ning lay in front of her, placing her hands on his shoulders, carrying her on his back and walking towards the door. As soon as he stepped out of the threshold, he turned to look at the people here. They were all disheveled, disheveled, and ragged, some lying there weak and sickly like Lu Ruin, some curled up in a corner trembling, and some moaning softly. He glanced at the woman again, her hands tightly embracing her child and murmuring, unsure of what she was saying. At this moment, a complex emotion surged in Tang Ning's heart, including happiness, pity, doubt, and even a bit of reluctance. Then he walked out of this door outside the door, there was another splendid world. From then on, he embarked on a completely different path, and this scene became an indelible memory in his future life, often remembered when he was confused and confused. Tang Ning carried Lu Ruin on his back and followed the man many ways to a mansion. Xiao Tsui, Xiao Tsui, the man pushed the door in and shouted loudly, Here you are, sir, a little girl quickly ran over to answer. The little girl looked slightly older than Tang Ning, twelve or thirteen years old. The man turned to look at Tang Ning and said, Come in, what are you doing standing at the door, afraid that others won't see you? You're a dead ghost, you haven't come for so many days. You'll be yelling and dying right away. A pretty woman walked towards her, twisting her waist and speaking coquettishly. She glanced at Tang Ning and said, Who are these two? The man greeted him with a smile and said, Isn't this here? The woman didn't buy it at all. I asked you, Who are these two? The little beggar on the roadside, Lord Shen, met him and insisted that I arrange a place for them. Didn't you say it's nothing to cause trouble? With so many people, can you manage it? There's nothing you can do about it. Come and stay for a day, promise one day, and then send them away. You're such a good Wang Di Hu. The woman was immediately displeased upon hearing this, and started to pounce. Beggar, why don't you send me to your house? I see through you, you have no conscience. You said we had a good day, but now you're all pushing me, beggar. I can't live any longer. As she spoke, she burst into tears, no, it's either going here or staying for a day. I'll leave tomorrow morning. 
The man panicked and immediately explained, Let me ask you, have you ever told your family about our affairs? How did you promise me back then? You said it would take at most three months, but now it's been six months. As an eight-foot-tall man, you can't even make a decision on this matter. I really followed the wrong person, the woman said while crying, immediately, tell her, don't worry, at most one month, we guarantee it will be completed. What, another month? I'll tell you, Wang Di Hu. I'll give you seven more days in the end. If you don't say it, I'll go find her myself. Promise, promise, okay, don't cry. Let me tell you something happy. Didn't you say the silk in Putian was good last time? I dragged a friend to bring you four horses this time, and they should be there in two days. The man coaxed the woman and helped her walk to one side of the room Tang Ning stood there with his head down and dared not speak until the two of them left, come with me, said the little girl named Xiao Tsui, taking the two of them to a room on the east side. You stay here. After Xiao Tsui finished speaking, she turned around and left. Tang Ning quickly dodged to the side and only pushed open the door when she left. The room was very simple, with a wooden bed, a cabinet, and a table. Tang Ning put Lu Ruin down and leaned her body against the bed. I carried her all the way, but fortunately she was light and not too difficult to carry. Lu Ruin looked at him and gently gestured with her fingers. I don't know where to go either. Tang Ning sat next to her and said, I'll go this morning. Lu Ruin lowered her head and looked gloomy as she listened to him talk about her experiences in the morning the sound of footsteps outside the door rang out, and Xiao Tsui walked in, holding a plate in her hand. This is what grandma gave you to eat. After finishing, I will take you to take a shower and change into clothes. Thank you, Tang Ning choked up, suddenly feeling like she wanted to cry, as if she had really returned home. Since that day, the two of them have been bullied for the past few months, and almost everyone treats them like street mice, either hitting or cursing. Don't be fooled by grandma's usual scolding, she's actually very kind and treats us servants well, Xiao Chui said. You guys eat first. I'll come over later. Tang Ning brought the plate to the bedside, which contained some pastries and fruits. He picked up a red cake and handed it to Lu Ruin, then picked up another one and tasted it himself. The smooth and crispy entrance melts instantly, not to mention that the two of them have never tasted such delicious food since they wandered around, even at home. One, two, three, a plate of pastry was quickly eaten by the two of them, and Tang Ning let out a full hiccup. It had been a long time since she had eaten so much. Ru Ru, are you full? Tang Ming gnawed on a fruit and asked Lu Ruin nodded and touched her stomach to indicate that she was full, you guys have your meal. Come with me, I'll take you to the place where the hot water is. Xiao Tsui came in with two sets of clothes and placed them on the table. This is my old clothes from before. We don't have any boys clothes here, so you can wear them casually. Tang Ning followed her to the woodshed. Xiao Tsui pointed to the large wooden bucket next to her and said, This is a wooden bucket for bathing. You can move it to your room yourself and use it before moving it back. There is a boiler for boiling water over there, and there is a fire switch next to it. You can start the fire yourself, and there is water in the well. You can make it yourself. Do you understand? Tang Ning nodded and said, I know. Don't run around, I will bring you food at noon. After Xiao Tsui left, Tang Ning came to the well and saw a rope bucket next to him. He threw the bucket into the well, picked up a bucket of water, and poured it into the boiler in the firewood room. It seemed like there wasn't enough, so he picked up another bucket and poured it into the boiler. Next, use a fire folder to start the fire and heat it up. Wait for the water to heat up and draw out the firewood. Then, move the large wooden barrel into the room. Ru Ru, wait a little longer, it will be ready soon. Tang Ning and Lu Ruin said a word and then ran to the firewood room, using a ladle to pour the water from the boiler into a small wooden bucket, carrying the small bucket back to the room, and pouring the water into the large wooden bucket. Afterwards, he went to the well to fetch cold water, 
returned to his room and poured it into a large wooden bucket, filling it with water several times back and forth. Tang Ning tried the water temperature with her hand, and the temperature was appropriate. Ru Ru, you wash it first. Lu Ruan walked out of bed and pointed outside with her little finger. Perhaps due to being full and energetic, her complexion had improved significantly compared to in the morning. Tang Ning went out and closed the door to guard outside. After a while, the door opened and Lu Ruan stood inside. She changed into clean clothes, with a head of black hair draped over her shoulders. Her eyes were bright and her teeth were white, her skin was as smooth as cream, her eyes were like autumn waves, her eyebrows were affectionate, and her facial features were exquisite, just like those of a person walking out of an opera. Tang Ming entered the room, and Lu Ruan closed the door and locked it with the door latch. Ruru, I haven't washed it yet. Why don't you wait outside too? Seeing her lock the door, Tang Ning spoke up Lu Ruan walked to the bedside and climbed onto the bed, his back facing him. Yu Yu reading www.uukangshu.net Ruru, why don't you wait outside for a while? Tang Ning felt very uncomfortable. Although they had been playing together since childhood and had taken a shower naked before, it was a long, long time ago, and now it's so big. Lu Ruan ignored him. Tang Ning had no choice but to quickly take off her clothes and get into the bucket. When she took off her clothes, she turned around three times, afraid that she would secretly turn around. He immersed his body in warm water, indulging in pleasure, and finally left the barrel to put on his clothes. Ru Ru, I'm done washing. Tang Ning finished wearing it and said Lu Ruan turned around and walked out of bed to his side. She wiped his face with her sleeve, wiping away any water droplets that had not been wiped clean. Tang Ning scooped the water from the big barrel into the small barrel, then poured it out and filled several barrels. The water in the big barrel was almost clean. He moved the large wooden barrel back to the firewood room and finished everything, and it was already noon. Xiao Tsui arrived with the food, and as soon as she entered the door, she kept staring at Lu Ruan. After the two finished their meal, Tang Ning let Lu Ruan rest on the wooden bed, while he walked around the yard himself. In the evening, Xiao Tsui brought food to the two of them and asked Tang Ning and her to pick up the blankets. Is she your sister? Xiao Tsui asked as they walked on the road, I guess so. He looks like a fox spirit, just like the fox spirit in the book. Tang Ning returned to the room with an old blanket, spread it on the bed, and the two of them lay down. This was the first time they had slept on a blanket since leaving the village, and it felt so warm. As soon as she lay down, Lu Ruan crawled into Tang Ning's arms, tightly embracing him with both hands. These days, the two of them slept together every day. Tang Ning had a conversation with her, and soon they fell into a deep sleep. Chapter 5 Ma Bang You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the early morning, the warm sunshine shone into the room, and Tang Ning returned to the room with water. The two of them finished washing up. Xiao Tsui walked in and said, The master wants you to go over. The two followed Xiao Tsui to the living room. Wang Di Hu was sitting on top and talking to the woman next to him when he stopped when they came in. Tang Ning took Lu Ruan's small hand and walked in front of him. Oh! Wang Di Hu exclaimed in surprise, she's really a beautiful embryo. She could have grown up like this at a young age. No wonder Xiao Tsui kept saying last night that she looks like a fox spirit. Aren't you interested in her? Why don't you leave her behind and make a small room for you, Mr. Wang, when she completely falls out, said the woman next to her, full of jealousy Wang Di Hu Shan Shan smiled and said, how could that be? How dare I? Lu Ruan lowered her head and tightly held on to Tang Ning's small hand when she heard that she was going to be left behind. Then I'll leave, Wang Di Hu said to the woman beside him, Hey, why are you in a hurry? Let's eat before leaving. The woman next to him grabbed his hand. No, it's quite a long way. I'll go earlier, otherwise I won't be able to make it tonight. Wang Di Hu finished speaking and walked towards the door, 
with Tang Ning pulling Lu Ruin behind him. There was a sturdy black horse tied under the locust tree outside the door. Wang Di Ho untied the rope on the tree, flipped over and rode on the horse's back, looking at Tang Ning and saying, Come up. Tang Ning walked up to the horse, and the tall horse in front of him was undoubtedly a huge creature. Just as he was thinking about how to get up, Wang Di Ho grabbed him with one hand and pulled him up, and then the person got onto the horse's back. Wang Di Ho then pulled Lu Ruin onto the horse, pulled on tight, Wang Di Ho said, hitting the horse's belly and the horse walked lightly. Tang Ning held on to Wang Di Ho's clothes tightly. He had never sat on a horse before. When the horse swayed, he was startled, but after sitting for a while, he slowly felt quite comfortable as the horse rhythmically swayed. Lu Ruin sat behind Tang Ning, his hands wrapped around her waist, tightly hugging her. The three of them walked out of the city on horseback, and Wang Di Hu's whip hit the horse's belly with a snap sound. The horse quickened its speed and began to gallop. Tang Ning sat on it, his body bouncing and looking at the fleeting scenery around him. After running for over an hour, the horse stopped and Wang Di Hu flipped over the horse, saying, Get down, let the horse rest for a while. Tang Ning followed his example and flipped off his horse, but Peng fell down with a loud sound. He patted his buttocks and got up, then lifted his feet and picked up Lu Ruin with both hands. Wang Di Hu took out a kettle from the saddle and poured a few sips into the horse. He took a sip and handed it to Tang Ning. Tang Ning took a sip, then gave Lu Ruin another sip, and returned it to him. Wang Di Hu leaned against a big tree, Tang Ning and Lu Ruin leaned against another tree, and the horses wandered around searching for grass to eat. This place is overgrown with weeds and there are no signs of people. A few acres of wheat fields can be seen not far away. After a while, Tang Ning walked up to Wang Di Hu and whispered, Uncle Wang, where are you taking us? You will know when you arrive. Oh, Tang Ning responded and was about to turn back when Wang Di Hu stopped him. Hey kid, I heard you tell Lord Shen that your parents were killed. Do you know who they are? Tang Ning shook his head and said, I don't know. So how did you escape the disaster? That day we went to the mountain to chop firewood. The whole village is dead. Wang Di Hu frowned as he listened. Uncle Wang, do you know where the Luoyun Mountains are? Luoyun Mountain Range, why are you asking this? Wang Di Hu's expression became solemn as he listened, my father once said that he originally wanted Uncle Lu to take me to the Luoyun Mountains. Take you to the Luoyun Mountains. What does your family do? Wang Di Hu's expression became more solemn. My family grows immortal valleys for the elders of the immortal family, and they come to harvest them every few years, Tang Ning said, I see, I have heard that those sects do indeed choose some places in the world to plant elixirs. Uncle Wang, do you know where the Luoyun Mountains are? Tang Ning asked with a hopeful expression on his face Wang Di Hu shook his head and said, I don't know, I just heard about it. It's the sect of the Qianyi sect of the immortal family, and only a very small number of people know where it is. I've been wandering in the martial arts world for so many years, and I've only heard about it. Oh, Tang Ning nodded, her expression dim. Wang Di Hu glanced at him and said, Actually, my parents were also killed by someone else. At that time, I was about the same age as you. I have been practicing martial arts hard for these years, but fortunately, I finally killed my enemy. Do you know where I took them? Tang Ning shook his head. Ma Gang, their leader was a friend I made when I wandered the martial arts world in my early years. I took you there because I had the same experience as you. I hope you can avenge me after learning martial arts, but now it seems that your enemy is not simple. Thank you very much, uncle. You don't need to thank me. According to my nature, I don't want to meddle in this matter. It's just that Lord Shen has given orders, and I have to do it. Anyway, it's the same where I'll take you. Just a little trouble, it's just a good time to meet my old friend. Tang Ning returned to sit down next to Lu Ruin. Lu Ruin was originally rubbing her small hands and exhaling to keep warm. 
When Tang Ning arrived, she covered Tang Ning's hand with her warm little hand to keep him warm. After resting for a while, the three of them set off again, taking breaks and pauses along the way. In the evening, as the sun set, Wang Dihu stopped in front of a mansion and said to the two, that's it here. Tang Ning flipped off his horse, and after several exercises that day, he was able to dismount proficiently, at least not falling. Thinking about her feet, Lu Ruan followed and the two stood behind Wang Dihu. The mansion gate in front of me is very tall, with two large golden characters carved above, horse gang. There are two men in black standing at the door, with big knives pinned around their waists. What are you doing? One of them walked up and asked, Brother, please inform your leader Chui that the West Boat King has arrived. You wait, the man said, turning back and walking inside. Not long after, six or seven people walked out of the room, each wearing a white coat, with a white face and a scholarly appearance. Brother Wang, the man clenched his fists at Wang Dihu, Brother Chui, Wang Dihu clenched his fists and replied the man grabbed Wang Dihu's arm and smiled, it's been over ten years since we parted ways in Xiangcheng. I don't want you and my brothers to meet again today. It's truly a pleasure in life. Come, 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 come with me into the village. Tonight, I will definitely have a big drink and not get drunk and not return. Wang Dihu followed him in, and Tang Ning and Lu Ruan also closely followed Wang Dihu. The group passed through the first gate and followed the main road to the second gate, which was guarded by four people. They passed through the second gate to the third gate, which was guarded by eight people. The fourth gate had sixteen people, and the fifth gate had thirty point two people. Tang Ning had never seen such a large mansion before, he had never even heard of it. He felt like he had walked for a long time just to the hall. The entire mansion covers an area of tens of acres, with nearly a hundred rooms available for rent. The rest of the buildings, pavilions, gardens, and pavilions can be seen everywhere. A few people arrived at the main hall, with a scholar-like man sitting in the upper seat, and the others each sitting in their lower seats. Tang Ning held Lu Ruin's small hand and stood behind Wang Dihu. The man pointed at Wang Dihu and introduced him to others, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to recommend one or two. This is Wang Dihu, the iron arm of the western boat. Long time, long time, long time. Several people clasped their fists to signal. Brother Wang, let me introduce you. This is Su Heli, who is traveling alone for thousands of miles, and this is Gu Xianji, who is skilled in reviving the spring. The man introduced one by one and said, Brother Wang, why hasn't there been any news in recent years? To be honest, Wang has long been tired of life in the martial arts world and doesn't want to live a life of fighting and killing anymore. He is now surviving in Nansha County as a minor official. Ah! The man sighed and said, everyone has their own aspirations. Brother Wang has already seen through fame and fortune, avoided worldly affairs, and is truly gratifying. Unfortunately, Chui is entangled in worldly affairs, so he can only envy fish in vain. By the way, these two little brothers are. Brother Chui, Wang came here today not only to meet friends, but also to entrust him with something else. Please speak. I hope Brother Chui can keep them both. This little thing is so trivial, someone is here, the man shouted a person walked in from the door and bowed, saying, Leader, do you have any instructions? Prepare a guest room and take these two little brothers down to rest first. You guys go down first, Wang Dihu said to the two of them. The two of them walked out. Brother Wang, who are these two little brothers? I dare not hide it from Brother Chui. Wang is currently on duty with Lord Shen Tsong Nan. The day before yesterday, Lord Shen went back to the mansion to offer sacrifices and encountered a beggar on the way. Lord Shen sympathized with his loneliness and asked Wang to arrange a place to go, so he came to trouble Brother Chui. The man nodded and said, A gentleman who sees his life cannot bear to see his death. Shen Tsong Nan is well known throughout the world and a person of benevolence and righteousness, truly deserving of his reputation. 
This kid's background is somewhat similar to Wang's, as his parents were killed. Therefore, he was sent here in the hope that he can practice martial arts diligently. Let's leave this matter to Chui. The caravan will be his refuge from now on. Not to mention that, it's rare to meet today. Come on, let's go and have a big drink first. Tang Ming followed a man into a room. You guys rest here tonight and don't run around, the person said Tang Ning nodded. Yu Yu reading www.yuyukangshu.net This room is much larger than Wang Dihu's room, with wooden crates, cabinets, bronze mirrors, combs, and other toiletries all in place. The blankets also look brand new. Tang Ning opened the window, and outside was a bamboo forest. It was cold winter, and the bamboo leaves had already turned yellow. Bamboo was different from other ordinary trees, and it usually had to wait until the transition of spring and summer when new green leaves grew and old leaves would fall off. A gust of cold wind blew by, and the bamboo leaves rustled. Tang Ning's body trembled for a moment and quickly closed the window. Looking back, Lu Ruin had already taken off her shoes and got into bed. Tang Ning walked over and sat next to her, saying, I haven't eaten yet, why do I sleep? Lu Ruin gestured a few times, and Tang Ning understood her meaning. She said she wanted to warm up the bed first. Ruru, we may stay here in the future. Lu Ruin nodded. Uncle Wang brought me here to learn martial arts, but I still want to go to the Luoyun Mountains. Let's stay here for now. If I find that place in the future, we. Before finishing speaking, the door opened and a little girl dressed as a maid walked into the room, put down the tray in her hand, and then retreated out. Tang Ming walked up to look, and as expected, there was food on the plate, along with a pot of hot water. The two of them had their meal, finished washing up, pulled the door latch, and lay down on the bed. Lu Ruin patted the hot area next to her to let Tang Ming sleep. Tang Ming took off her shoes and leaned over to embrace her. Lu Ruin hugged him with both hands, and her small body squeezed against him again, rubbing her face against his. I don't know what they will let us do tomorrow, Uncle Wang said he wants me to learn martial arts. I don't know who to learn from, it's best. Tang Ning said to her night falls, the moon rises high, and a new day is about to begin. Chapter 6 Practice You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Da da da. There was a knocking outside the door, and Tang Ning opened her eyes. Just as she remembered, her body was tightly entangled by Lu Ruin. Tang Ning gently pushed her and said, Ru Ru, Ru Ru, get up quickly. Someone is coming. Lu Ruin opened her eyes in a daze, her big watery eyes staring at him, her body squeezing into his arms again, and her face gently rubbing against his. Someone's here. Tang Ning said again only then did Lu Ruin hear clearly and let go of the little hand that was holding him. Tang Ning lifted the blanket, got out of bed, and opened the door. The sky outside turned white, and thick fog shrouded him. Wang Di Ho stood at the door, and the door opened. He walked in and said, I'm about to leave. Come and take a look at you. Upon hearing these words, Tang Ning suddenly felt a bit reluctant. They had not been together for long, only for a day, but the feeling of reluctance was so genuine. Although he always says it's because of Lord Shen's orders, Tang Ning understands that he is a good person. He could easily find a place to arrange their accommodation, but he brought them to his own home. He could easily find an iron shop to send them away, but he spared no effort in sending them here. Because Tang Ning once said that his parents were killed, he wrote it down and sent him to practice martial arts. You are willing to learn martial arts from them here, even if you cannot avenge them. Learning good martial arts will not be a problem for you to support yourself. With the wish of meeting old friends, the task assigned by Lord Shen has been completed, and I am leaving. Wang Dihu finished speaking and turned to walk outside the door. Uncle Wang, Tang Ning called out to him Wang Dihu turned around. Tang Ning knelt down and kowtowed three times, thank you. Thank you, Lord Shen. 
His name is Shin Tsong Nan. Tang Ming looked at his departing figure with a sense of melancholy. Lu Ruan walked over and wiped his forehead with her small hand. Tang Ming held her hand and closed the door, then got into bed. Lu Ruan hugged him and leaned over to kiss his face, then pressed it against him. Tang Ming was slightly stunned. The two had never done this before. Lu Ruan's face lightly rubbed against him, and at that moment, he felt a very strange feeling in his heart, but he couldn't say exactly what it felt. The two of them lingered in bed for a while, and as the sky grew brighter, the voices of people could be faintly heard outside the door. After a while, the voice grew louder and louder. Ru Ru, let's get up too. Tang Ning spoke, and as soon as she finished speaking, there was a knock on the door outside. The two got out of bed and opened the door. A man in black stood outside the door, with a tall figure and a cold and stern expression. He carried a black long sword behind him and said, Are you brought by Wang Dihu yesterday? Yes, Tang Ming nodded, follow me, the man said and turned around to leave. Tang Ming grabbed Lu Ruin's small hand and quickly followed. The two of them followed him all the way out of the mansion door. There was a carriage parked at the door, and the man crawled in. The two of them also followed him into the carriage. The carriage set off, with Tang Ning holding Lu Ruin's small hand and sitting on one side, and the man sitting on the other side with his hands on his legs. His upper body was straight and the carriage swayed, but his body remained motionless. Where are we going? Tang Ning asked softly the man glanced at him without answering, and Tang Ning dared not ask again after driving for an unknown amount of time, the carriage came to a stop. The man got up and got off the carriage, and Tang Ning naturally followed suit. This is a valley surrounded by mountains, and the sound of warblers and birds singing is endless. A group of children about the same age as Tang Ning were walking briskly on the mountain road, carrying two buckets on their shoulders. The leaves rustled slightly, and a man swept over from mid-air and turned over to stop in front of them. The man was also dressed in black, holding a bamboo stick in his mouth and a playful expression on his lips, saying, Hey, senior brother Chi, how come you have time? Leave these two people to you. No, it's not. It's been some time now, why are you still accepting people? Also, a little girl, hey, she looks pretty good. It's the master's command. The man pursed his lips and said, Come with me. This is where you live. My name is Qin Luo, and you can call me General Manager Qin. You can take a day off today and take a walk to have a look. Tomorrow, you will start practicing martial arts like them. That's the kitchen. You can watch when they eat and follow them to eat, the man said as he took the two to the dormitory, well, Coach Qin, I'll practice with them, and what about her? Tang Ming asked softly, yeah, I almost forgot. What should I do if I return a girl? Let's do this. I'll arrange for her tomorrow. After the man left, Tang Ning and Lu Ruan entered the room, which was much worse than the guest rooms in the caravan. It was small and rudimentary, but fortunately it was still relatively clean. After staying in the room for a while, towards noon, Tang Ning saw those people rushing towards the living room and pulled Lu Ruan towards the inside. As soon as they entered, the crowd's gaze flickered towards them. Being stared at by dozens of people, Tang Ning felt very uncomfortable. She lowered her head and walked behind a person, consciously queuing up. Who are you? How come I've never seen you before, asked a person in front of Tang Ning who was about the same age as him, I only came today, Tang Ning whispered, why are there still people coming today? Isn't it already past the recruitment deadline? the child wondered Tang Ning didn't know how to answer, so he could only say, I don't know either. Who is she? Why is there still a girl? She's my sister, she came with me. Oh, my name is Gu Qingqian, I came two months earlier than you. My name is Tang Ning, and her name is Lu Ruin. Lu Ruin kept her head down, her small hand tightly holding on to Tang Ning's hand. Tang Ning followed the team forward, went to the counter to collect his food, and then followed them to the living room next to the kitchen, 
where he found a table in the corner and sat down. Lu Ruin followed him and the two of them finished their meal and returned to their room. Oh, you guys live here. Just as I was about to walk in, a voice came from behind. Tang Ning turned around and saw a fair-skinned boy with straight features looking at them. It was Gu Qingqian who had just talked to him. Do you live here? Gu Qingqian asked Tang Ning nodded. I live here, next to you. There are a total of four rooms on this corridor, and Tang Ning lives in the third room. Gu Qingqian pointed to the second room and said, Don't you need to practice martial arts? Tang Ning asked, After finishing dinner every day, there is an hour to rest. I happen to be free, can I come to your room and sit down for a while? Come in. The three of them entered the room, with Gu Qingqian sitting on a chair and Lu Ruin sitting next to Tang Ning by the bed. Did everyone here arrive two months ago? Tang Ning asked, Of course not. Some have already stayed for a year, some have stayed for two years, and some have stayed for three years. Tang Ning nodded, no wonder he saw several people who were obviously much taller than them in the kitchen just now. Does everyone have to stay for three years before they can leave? Not everyone, most people have to stay for three years. They have an annual assessment, and once they pass the assessment, they can become formal disciples of the caravan. Formal disciple. That's right. Only those who pass the assessment are formal disciples and will further teach martial arts. If they don't pass the assessment for three years, they can only become foreign affairs disciples of the caravan. Do you know what a caravan does? Of course I know, I'll tell you. Gu Qingqian said proudly, the horse gang is the largest green forest gang in Chu. All horse trading in Chu must be registered and approved by the horse gang before trading. The leader of this generation of horse gang is called Chui Yilin, and the people in the martial arts world call him the Sword Rain Scholar. He is recognized as a master of swordsmanship and one of the four great masters of Chu. Sword Rain Scholar That's right, because his swordsmanship is extremely high, and when he uses his sword, it is as fast and dense as rain. In addition, he always dresses like a scholar, so he is called the Sword Rain Scholar. Have you ever heard of the West Boat Iron Arm King Di Ho? Shizhou Iron Arm. I haven't heard of it, by the way, where do you come from? We came from Anning County, and you. I'm from Dongsheng County, and my family runs an escort agency. My father asked me to come here to learn excellent martial arts and take over the agency. Throughout the whole afternoon, the two of them were chatting about this and that. Tang Ning didn't understand anything after coming here, so it would be great to ask someone. Gu Qingqian is an outgoing person, and if he has the opportunity to showcase his knowledge, he naturally knows everything. Until it was time to practice in the afternoon, Gu Qingqian left and agreed with Tang Ning to come back tonight. In the afternoon, Tang Ning pulled Lu Ruin around the area. After dinner in the evening, Gu Qingqian arrived as promised, and the two talked a lot more. In the evening, someone brought a set of blue clothes and told him where to gather tomorrow morning. The next morning, Gu Qingqian knocked on the door and woke up Tang Ning. In fact, there was no need for him to shout. Tang Ning woke up early because he was going to practice with them today. Last night, Gu Qingqian said that if he arrived late, he would be severely punished. Tang Ning woke up early, but Lu Ruin was sleeping soundly. The two of them hugged each other tightly, and he couldn't break free, so he lay in bed for a while longer. Tang Ning, Tang Ning, Gu Qingqian knocked on the door and shouted outside. Lu Ruin opened her eyes. Ruru, I'm going to practice martial arts. You can sleep a little longer. Lu Ruin let go of her hand, Tang Ning climbed out of bed, opened the door, and closed it again. She followed Gu Qingqian to a corner of the mountain, where more than twenty people were already standing in four queues by the time they arrived. Tang Ning stood behind Gu Qingqian, and someone gradually joined the queue. After a while, a man in black arrived, and everyone straightened their bodies. Tang Ning heard from Gu Qingqian yesterday that wearing this black outfit is the official disciple of the caravan, 
and this person's name is Shiti, who is their instructor. All disciples practice martial arts separately based on their length of time. This place is where new disciples practice, with those who have practiced for one year in another place and those who have practiced for two years in another place. Tang Ning calculated the number of people here, including himself, totaling 32 people. Shi Ti walked up to them and scanned everyone with his eyes. He had a serious expression and a serious smile, which was completely different from Qin Luo, who Tang Ning had met yesterday and claimed to be the head coach. He looked a bit like the man surnamed Qin who had sent him over, but his aura was not as impressive as him. He gave Tang Ning a special glance, but didn't say anything. It was probably Qin Luo who had spoken to him. Let's start, he said as everyone ran up the mountain. Tang Ning followed them for a jog behind, which was the first lesson of practicing martial arts every day, running the mountain. Not long after running, Tang Ning felt a bit overwhelmed and gasped for breath, barely following Gu Qingqian in front. Gu Qingqian is also panting, but not as powerful as Tang Ning. Up the mountain from here, then down from the east to the origin, a total of 10 miles. Running on mountains is different from running on flat roads, as it requires much more physical exertion. Tang Ning has been following his father up the mountains since he was young, and although he has traveled many mountain roads, he has never run before. Don't worry, be careful to control your breathing, Gu Qingqian said after running for a while, Tang Ning felt his little heart almost jump out, feeling dizzy and dizzy. Although the speed of the entire team slowed down at this moment, he couldn't hold on anymore. Leaving the team and leaning against the tree, he crouched down, his body tumbling like a river and a sea, feeling extremely uncomfortable. As he watched the team move further and further away, he really wanted to stand up and catch up, but he was powerless, with weak limbs and weak legs. Tang Ning took the kettle and took a big sip of water. Shi Ti took the kettle and said, There is only one road ahead, keep walking along this road. After finishing speaking, he chased after the team and took big steps, one jong away at a time. He was like a crane, light and floating, and every time he landed, he only lightly stepped out of the next step Tang Ming took a break and felt much better. She stood up and walked forward. After walking for a long time, there was still no one in front of him. He didn't know how far the road was, so he could only gasp for breath and keep walking forward. When he returned to his original place when he went down the mountain, only Shi Ti was there. At this point, his whole body was already completely soaked in sweat. Shi Ti took out two mantu and gave them to him. This is breakfast. They have already eaten. Take a rest for a quarter of an hour and prepare for the next lesson. Chapter 7 Dreams You are listening at NovelFull.audio after eating Mantu, he lay on the ground for a while and watched Chi Hoof walk forward. Knowing that it was time to rest, Downing quickly got up and followed him. The two of them went into a large courtyard one in front and one later, with dozens of large water tanks arranged. Tang Ning nodded and picked up the two buckets, then ran out the door towards the south. Not far away, I saw a person walking towards me with two buckets of water. Upon closer inspection, it turned out to be Gu Qingqian. Are you still doing this homework? Tang Ning asked, thinking that they had already finished this homework. After all, it took him so long to run the mountain, and now seeing them still doing this homework, he felt quite happy in his heart. Do you think it's easy to fill that big jar? Gu Qingqian stopped and said, How much have you filled up now? How many trips can you fill up? I've filled half of it, and you're almost done with two buckets full and running ten times. Is the river near here? You keep walking along this road, and when you get there, I'll know. If I don't tell you anymore, I need to hurry up. Tang Ning carried an empty bucket and walked forward. Along the way, he saw many people coming towards him, some fast and some slow, and many of them took breaks. After walking for a long time, he finally arrived at the riverbank. He filled two buckets with water and carried them back. Halfway through, he stopped to rest. 
He had been up the mountain since childhood, chopping firewood, carrying firewood, and fetching water back home. He did this kind of thing frequently. It's really unprecedented to walk such a long distance with such two heavy buckets of water. The road from the river to the yard is at least two miles away. And it's carried, not carried. He used to chop firewood and put it on his shoulder when he came home, which saved a lot of effort. After resting for a while, he picked up the bucket and continued walking forward. On his third way back, he met Gu Qingqian, who had already filled the water tank and completed the homework. Fortunately, there are still many people who have not completed it. As time passed, there were fewer and fewer people on the road, and more and more people completed their homework. Gradually, he was the only one left. When he was carrying a bucket for the sixth time on his way back, Shi Ti walked over and went to eat. It's time to rest for an hour after finishing dinner and continue in the afternoon. Kang Ning put down the bucket, his arms seemed to be filled with molten iron, and he couldn't even lift them. When they arrived at the kitchen, there was no one in it. It seemed that the others had already finished eating, and it was unclear if Lu Ruin had eaten. Kang Ning returned to the room. Unexpectedly discovered that Lu Ruin was not in the room. Hey, where have you been? She shouldn't run around alone without herself. Just as Tang Ning was about to go out and find her, he remembered yesterday when Qin Luo seemed to have arranged for her to do things today. So, should Qin Luo take her away or wait for her to come back on her own he went to the kitchen to pick up the food and finished it in the living room next to him. When he returned to the room, he fell into bed, feeling very tired. As soon as he fell down, he immediately fell asleep. In a daze, a warm and soft body squeezed in, and a familiar fragrance came from the tip of the nose. He had a dream that he was riding a tall horse, galloping non-dot-stop in the blood-red sky and earth. Looking down, the horse turned out to be a skeleton horse, with piles of dead bones underfoot. Tang Ming suddenly opened his eyes and realized that it was a dream just now. Lu Ruin lay in his arms, his watery big eyes staring at him. Seeing him wake up, Lu Ruin squeezed her body into his arms again, kissed his face with her small mouth, and gently rubbed it against him. Ru Ru, where did you go this morning? Tang Ning asked Lu Ruin raised her head and gestured for a while, but Tang Ning didn't quite understand. Lu Ruin repeated it again. Are you saying to go out with someone to buy groceries in the morning and wash them when you come back? Lu Ruin nodded. Ru Ru, are those people good to you? Did they say you scolded you? Tang Ning was very worried. She couldn't speak, afraid that others would look down on her and bully her Lu Ruin gestured for a while again, to the effect that she didn't know how to buy things, just followed people to pick up things and wash vegetables. Ruru, I'll learn from them well. When we go out, you stay at home and don't go out to work. Lu Ruin pressed her face against him and nodded. Tang Ning, Tang Ning. There was a knocking on the door outside Tang Ning got out of bed and opened the door. Gu Qingqian walked in and said, I woke up and came to play with you. What are you doing? Why do you keep the door locked during the day? When Tang Ning came in, he didn't lock the door. The door must have been locked by Lu Ruin, I'm sleeping. Did I wake you up? No, I woke up early. By the way, I saw you walking quite fast when you picked up the bucket today. You were the first one among us to finish our homework, you're amazing. Ha <laughs> ha. Gu Qingqian looked quite proud. Of course, I have been practicing martial arts with my father since I was young. Are you all practicing martial arts from a young age? I feel like you're all quite skilled. Of course not, most of them are the same as you. When I first arrived, many people were not as good as you. Actually, I was quite tired on the first day, and I'll get used to it after a while. Really? Did they do the same when they first arrived? Yeah. Otherwise, what do you think? Hey, what's your sister doing here? She helps buy and wash vegetables. What's her name? Lu Ruin, she can't speak. Oh. 
The two chatted for a while until the afternoon when everyone gathered at the foot of the mountain. Shi Ti gave a command and each went to do their own homework. Tang Ning returned to the roadside and picked up his bucket. He was the only one who had not completed this homework yet. About an hour later, when he poured two buckets of water into the water tank one by one, the tank finally filled up and overflowed a lot. Tang Ning lay underground, panting heavily. After resting for a while, he walked towards the next homework location, which was a plum blossom village. The content of the homework is to stand on the farm and do a half-hour horse walk. Tang Ning certainly can't squat for so long. Every time he gets numb in his legs and feet, he falls off from above to rest and then goes up to continue squatting. After accumulating for half an hour, start the next lesson by kicking high a thousand times. When he kicked two hundred times, Shi Ti told him to eat and that's all for today. These new disciples have five homework tasks per day, including mountain running, bucket lifting, squatting, high kicking, and regular boxing. Tang Ning only completed three of them. After finishing dinner in the evening and returning to the room, Tang Ning walked straight to the bedside and leaned up. Lu Ruan climbed onto the bed and sat behind him, gently pinching his shoulders and pounding his back. Ruru, have you eaten yet? Tang Ning lay in bed, with Lu Ruan's soft little hand resting on his back. Lu Ruan nodded. The door pushed open, and Gu Qingqian walked in. He saw Tang Ning lying in bed, while Lu Ruan knelt there, pinching his shoulders and pounding his back. He was taken aback for a moment, then reacted with envy in his eyes. He took a stool and sat next to Tang Ning, saying, Hello still. I brought my sister here, and when I'm tired, there are still people to take care of me. If only I had known that I asked my father to buy a maid. Tang Ning lay on the bed without looking back. He was too lazy to move, and behind him, Lu Ruan's small hand landed on his back, feeling comfortable. When did you finish your homework today? I think you finished it early and have been playing there all along. No. It's not very early either, half an hour before dinner. Mainly because the morning homework was a bit tiring, and the afternoon homework was okay. I only finished it in an hour and a half. You mentioned last time that there is an annual assessment. Do you know when the assessment is? I'm not sure about this, it should be us practicing martial arts for a full year. Tang Ning sat up and said, Haven't you practiced martial arts before? Can you give me a fight here? I am practicing external martial arts, but I have never practiced internal mental techniques. Internal mind technique. What is it? Tang Ning heard of this for the first time and asked curiously, The internal skill technique is to practice internal power. The deeper the internal power, the greater the power when using moves. If a person's internal power is not deep, even the most powerful moves will not be too powerful. Can you show me your foreign martial arts skills first? Okay, it's okay, it's just that this place is too small. Let me play our Gu family's martial arts. Gu Qingqian stood up, put on a good posture, and punched out one by one, each punch full of momentum. After finishing a set of punches, Gu Qingqian withdrew his punches and took a long breath to sit down. Can you teach me how to play this set of punches? Sure, Gu Qingqian said confidently. Then teach me now. Let's go find a more spacious place. Tang Ning jumped out of bed and said, now. Gu Qingqian said with a frown on his face. Tomorrow is better. I still have to do laundry later. I haven't washed my clothes for many days. Okay, you can teach me tomorrow. The two chatted for a while before Gu Qingqian left. Tang Ning washed himself with water and lay down on the bed. Lu Ruin pulled the door up, extinguished the light, and entered his arms. In the dead of night, the room was silent, except for the faint sound of Tang Ning's even breathing. Lu Ruin hugged him tightly, her big eyes fixed on him, and after a while, she leaned over to kiss him on the cheek, and then kissed him again. The bright moonlight outside shone through the window on the blankets covered by the two of them. 
Lu Ruin's moist lips pecked Tang Ning's cheek several times, and her small body twisted in his arms, changing to a more comfortable sleeping position. She pressed their faces together and closed her eyes. In a hazy and hazy state, Tang Ning felt a whirlwind and his body was constantly sinking and sinking it seemed that after a long time, he opened his eyes and saw a grey world before him. The sky was grey, the earth was grey, and everything was grey. It's like thick fog wrapping around the sky and earth, Yu Yu reading www.yuukangshu.net can't see anything clearly, there's no sound. It's a dream, right? Tang Ning thought to herself I pinched my thighs with my hands and felt a little pain. No way. How can one feel pain while dreaming? Tang Ning was a bit confused. She raised her hand and let out a loud sound, causing an immediate pain on her face. It's not a dream, it's real. Tang Ning widened his eyes and looked at everything here in disbelief, even though he couldn't see anything. He was afraid in his heart, lifted his hand and slapped hard, still feeling the same noise and pain. Impossible, impossible. He was lying in bed, how could he be here? He didn't believe it, he couldn't believe it. Pop, pop, pop. There was a loud sound, and his face was burning with pain. Why haven't you woken up yet, why haven't you woken up yet? Tang Ning kept slapping himself anxiously with her hand he sat down on the ground with a loud bang, with a lump on his face. Ru Ru, Ru Ru. Suddenly, he stood up and shouted loudly around him. He shouted for a long time, but there was only his voice in the world. I want to go back, I want to go back, he whispered, running forward regardless of everything. The surroundings were hazy and shrouded in thick fog, constantly enveloping him. He ran forward, running for an unknown amount of time. He was exhausted and collapsed. He lay on the ground looking at the sky, grey and unable to see anything, as if everything had just been an illusion. He had not even moved and had been here all along. He was desperate, his body was very tired, and he didn't even have the energy to move. He closed his eyes. Take a nap. Take a nap, perhaps when you wake up, you will return to that world of birds singing and flowers fragrant, and most importantly, return to her side. Chapter 8 Breaking Dreams You are listening at NovelFull.audio Tang Ming opened his eyes and still saw the grey world before him. He let out a desperate roar, stood up, and ran frantically forward. He is very certain that he really slept for a while, and the time is not short, because his physical strength has recovered some, but he is still in this world. Don't stay here, he doesn't want to stay here. Run forward, keep running until he is exhausted and falls down again. Tears welled up from the corners of his eyes, flowing down his cheeks and onto the ground. He had to accept the reality that it was not a dream, and that he truly existed in this place. After lying for a long time, he got up and dragged his tired body forward. This place always has an end, keep moving forward, and always come out of this place, he thought to himself after walking for a long, long time, his legs were trembling as he walked. Unable to support himself, he stopped and sat there panting heavily, taking a break before continuing forward. Walking and taking a break, I don't know how long I've been walking. Suddenly, at a certain moment, he felt a whirlwind and dizziness, as if it was just a moment, and it seemed like a long time had passed before he opened his eyes. The first thing that caught the eye was Lu Ruin's delicate and flawless face, their bodies hugged together, their faces still pressed against each other, and they were covered in a red cotton quilt. Tang Ning looked around and felt the warmth of her body. The tender and smooth feeling on her face was the true touch of Lu Ruin's skin I'm back, I'm back myself. Tang Ning touched his left cheek, smooth as jade, without any redness or swelling. He was so excited that he almost shouted out loud. Holding Lu Ruin's warm and soft body tightly with both hands, her face gently rubbed against her. Lu Ruin was awakened by his movements and opened her eyes in a daze, looking at him. It's okay, go to sleep. Tang Ning whispered, as the sky was still early and not turning white. Lu Ruin tilted her head slightly, 
kissed him on the cheek, and then closed her eyes. Tang Ming looked at the wall above her head, feeling completely drowsy and afraid to sleep, afraid of falling into that terrible place again when she fell asleep. He looked around at the four sides, the ground and windows, and then at her in his arms, suddenly realizing that the world he was living in now was so beautiful. Before this, he had been thinking about revenge in his heart, but now he realized that there was something more important than revenge, which was the person in his arms, Lu Ruin. Revenge can be set aside first, but she must never leave herself. At that place, when he confirmed that it was not a dream, the first thing that came to his mind was not that he could not seek revenge, but rather her. Worried that she might be bullied in the future, worried that she might wake up and find herself missing, and worried that she wouldn't be able to find her, feeling sad and sad. Tang Ming tightly embraced her body and leaned over to peck at her moist lips. I finally came back, but what happened to that dream? Tang Ming is not sure if it is a dream, and if it is a dream, that dream is too real. It's like experiencing it firsthand, he remembers every moment that happens inside clearly. If it weren't for the lack of redness and swelling on his face, he would have doubted whether he had really gone to that place for a walk and I've been in that place for a long time, what's going on? Is it really just a dream? Tang Ning was lost in thought and could only console herself by having a strange dream. Darkness is slowly being driven away, and the sky is turning white. Tang Ning pushed Lu Ruin, and Lu Ruin opened her eyes. Ruru, I have to get up now. Lu Ruin let go of her hand, climbed out of bed, prepared toiletries for him, and went to fetch water for him. Ru Ru, I'll do it myself. You can sleep a little longer. Tang Ning said Lu Ruin ignored him and brought water. After Tang Ning finished washing up, she went out. Lu Ruin watched him leave until his figure completely disappeared before locking the door and climbing back onto the bed. Tang Ning arrived at the foot of the mountain, empty at the moment. There was still about half an hour before the gathering time. The reason why he came early was to warm up and exercise before others came. There's nothing he can do. He already has a poor foundation and is two months behind those who have been practicing martial arts since childhood. If he doesn't work hard, he will never catch up with them. After kicking two hundred high legs and punching two hundred straight punches at the foot of the mountain, he ran towards the mountain. After running for a while, I couldn't move anymore, so I took a quick step and calculated the time. When I felt it was almost time, I went down the mountain and reserved a fifteen-minute break for myself. When he returned to the foot of the mountain, most people had already arrived. Watching him come down from the mountain, sweating profusely, everyone looked at him in surprise. Tang Ning stood behind someone, panting heavily. Gu Qingqian walked over and said, why did you go? I shouted in front of your door for a long time today, but no one answered. I came a long time ago, Tang Ning replied, why did you come so early? By the way, what did you do just now? You're sweating all over. My foundation is worse than yours, and I came later, so I feel like I need to work harder and come earlier to fight my fist and run the mountain. Oh, that's it. Gu Qingqian nodded everyone was running up the mountain, and Tang Ning was also running. However, as he ran, he couldn't move anymore. The distance between him and the others grew larger and larger, and he gradually lost sight of them. When he couldn't run, he stopped and walked slowly. He regained some strength and continued running, just like yesterday. When he came down the mountain, the others were already doing their second homework. Shi Ti was still waiting for him, took out two mantu for him, rested for a quarter of an hour, and began his second lesson. Still unfinished, it was time for lunch break. After eating, I returned to my room and slept with Lu Ruin in my arms. In the afternoon, he continued to complete his unfinished homework. Overall, he made some progress today compared to yesterday. By the end, his high kick homework had already been completed. In the evening, after having dinner, Lu Ruin returned to his room and lay on the bed, gently squeezing and hammering with her small hands. In no time, Gu Qingqian arrived, 
and Tang Ning immediately pulled him to teach him Gu family fist. The three of them arrived at the foot of the mountain, and Lu Ruan also followed. Tang Ning didn't originally want her to come, as the place was quite cold and afraid it would freeze her, but she had to follow. You're doing this, arms are straight, legs are not like this, the hind legs should be slightly bent, and when exerting force, lean against your entire body, and hit your hands up a little more. Tang Ning was studying with a dignified attitude, while Gu Qingqian corrected him bit by bit. Lu Ruan sat not far away, watching them. At night, the candle was extinguished, the door was locked, and Lu Ruan entered Tang Ning's arms, pressing her face together. Tang Ning hugged her body and leaned over to lightly kiss her lips. Lu Ruan looked up at him with watery eyes, and Tang Ning pecked at him again. Lu Ruan smiled, full of joy, and tightly embraced him with both hands. My dad used to say, you're our daughter. In law. When others ask you who you are in the future, I won't talk about my younger sister anymore, but just say that I haven't been to our daughter. In law before, okay? Tang Ning said Lu Ruan nodded repeatedly, her eyes smiling and her eyebrows flying. Ru Ru, then it's settled that we can't change. We'll get married when we're a little older. After we get married, I'll save up money to buy a big yard and manage all the money at home for you. If you want to have money, we can still open a restaurant. I am the shopkeeper, and you can be the shopkeeper's wife. However, don't work hard. It's not good for you to always show your face. If others see you too much, they will have bad intentions. Let's invite a few assistants, and you can stay at home with me. The bright moon hangs high in the sky, and the cold crows fly on the branches. After a tiring day, Tang Ning quickly fell asleep after imagining the future. Lu Ruan's face rubbed against him, her eyes staring blankly at the ground, not knowing what she was thinking, but a knowing smile occasionally appeared on her face. After a while, she lifted her head and looked at Tang Ning. She lowered her head and kissed him at the corner of his mouth, then lowered her head and kissed him again, her eyes filled with joy. Like a precious treasure, Lu Ruan held him tightly with both hands, rubbing his face against him. After a while, she turned her head to kiss his face, and then kissed it again. It's that kind of feeling again, heaven and earth spinning and the body sinking. Tang Ning opened his eyes and a grey world came here again. His heart was no longer afraid and panicked. Although he didn't know where it was, he would eventually go back, and that was enough. He couldn't distinguish where it was, everything around him was grey and the same everywhere, and he couldn't even tell where it was. If it's the location he left last time, he will continue to move forward and always find the end here. But if it appears in the position yesterday, it means he always appears in this position, and moving forward is meaningless. Anyway, go ahead and take a look. One thing that can be confirmed is that this is definitely not as simple as ordinary dreams. Walk forward, keep walking, for a long, long time, until Tang Ning stops. His legs and feet were a bit numb, and after resting for a long time, he continued to walk forward. As he walked, the sky and earth spun around. He opened his eyes and looked out the window, but the sky had not yet turned white. Lu Ruan was sleeping soundly in his arms, and he hugged her tightly. Outside the window, the clear sound of warblers singing came, and he didn't know the exact time. He felt that it should be similar to the time he woke up yesterday, and he didn't know if he would wake up at this point every day. He vividly remembers resting in that place three times, each time only stopping when his legs became numb. After a while, the sky turned white and Tang Ning woke up Lu Ruan. Lu Ruan woke up and got out of bed to fetch water and prepare toiletries for him. She watched him disappear before closing the door and lying back in bed. Tang Ning came to the foot of the mountain, practicing high kicking, punching, and running. Returning to the foot of the mountain, leaving a fifteen-minute break, Shi Ti arrived and the day's homework began. After finishing dinner in the evening, I followed Gu Qingqian to learn Gu Family Fist, and at night, I hugged Lu Ruan and slept. The dream arrived as scheduled, and he arrived at that place. Like the other day, 
he ended his dream journey while walking, and he really wanted to know where the end of that place was. After seven days of such a day, he walked in that dream for a whole seven days, still achieving nothing. He also thought of ways, such as making a mark. He tried the method of marking lines on the ground, but it was of no use. Whether it was marking at the beginning or at the last departure, there was nothing left the next day. On the eighth day, he was no longer stubborn, so he sat in place and spent a whole dream. On the ninth day, he decided to use this place to do something useful for himself and began practicing Goo Family Fist. In the following days, he did his homework every day and practiced boxing at that place at night. In thirty or forty days, he was able to keep up with the speed of most people and complete his daily homework on time. He was even more proficient in Gu Family Fist, and when he used it fluently, it surprised Gu Qingqian. During this period, he also met Qin Luo once. When he got up early in the morning to run the mountain, Qin Luo remembered him and encouraged him a few words. Qin Luo casually asked about Lu Ruan's situation, and Tang Ning naturally answered whatever he asked. Take good care of your sister. She's quite clingy to you. Last time I said I would arrange a room for her to live alone, but the little girl refused to do anything and was so anxious that she was almost crying, Qin Luo said with a smile, she's not my sister, she's my daughter. In law who hasn't been to my house before, Tang Ning replied. Ah. Qin Luo widened his eyes and was stunned before laughing and leaving day by day, for months had passed in the blink of an eye. On this day, Tang Ning and everyone gathered at the foot of the mountain as usual. Chapter 9 Internal Force You are listening at NovelFull.audio Tang Ning and everyone gathered at the foot of the mountain. After a while, Shi Ti and Qin Luo walked side by side. Everyone was a bit surprised because Qin Luo had never been here before and didn't know how he came today. Everyone should know me, some may have forgotten. Let me introduce myself again. My name is Qin Luo, and I am your head coach. This time, I am here to announce something to you. From now on, you will be a member of the caravan and will start a new lesson. Qin Luo said, and everyone below was beaming with joy, whispering in whispers. Take a day off today and start a new lesson tomorrow, Shi Ti said one step forward. Everyone was even happier. After coming here, they did their homework every day and never expected to have a good rest today. Tang Ning returned to the room and knocked on the door, saying, Ru Ru, Ru Ru. Quickly, footsteps sounded and the door opened. Tang Ning walked in, closed the door, and lay down on the bed holding her hand. Lu Ruan crawled into his arms, her big watery eyes staring at him. Tang Ning hugged her and said, Just now, instructor she said to take a day off today. I want to wait in town to buy you some clothes, okay? Actually, years ago, Tang Ning was thinking of going to the town to buy her some clothes, but she never had time. Nowadays, Lu Ruan no longer does dry cleaning and buying groceries. She follows an uncle to keep track of her accounts every day. The uncle's hair tied wife likes her very much, so she is specially persuaded to transfer her to study bookkeeping. The two of them have also saved several tales of silver in the past few months. Tang Ning has a monthly salary of two tales of silver, all of which are entrusted to her for management. Lu Ruin gestured for a while. You're going too. All right then. You'll go talk to Uncle Min later and take a leave with him. What? Oh, yes. I still went to that place. It's really boring. I'm just practicing Gu Family Fist, and I don't know any other martial arts skills. I'm pretty good at boxing now, not even Ching Qian is my opponent. Tang Ming said to her as it was still early in the morning. Lu Ruan tightly hugged him with both hands, rubbing his face against his and occasionally kissing him on the cheek. Tang Ning had already told her about the situation in her dream before. At first, Lu Ruin was quite worried, but later on, seeing nothing unusual, she gradually felt relieved. After so many days of sleepwalking, 
Tang Ning also figured out some patterns and found that the time of each sleepwalking was between the prime and prime hours, about three hours, and it was strange that he would also fall asleep in that dream. Sometimes when he gets tired from practicing boxing, he lies down and takes a nap. He doesn't know how long he slept, but every time he wakes up, his energy fully recovers. Lu Ruin rubbed his face against him, listened to him speak, and slightly turned her head to kiss his face again. She doesn't care what his strange dream is. As long as he's okay, she doesn't want anything as distant as the Luoyun Mountains that he often talks about. As long as the two of them are together every day like they are now. After a few years, when the two became married, she still waited on him every day like she did now, warming his bed, fetching water to wash up, cooking and cooking. Just these are enough the sky is clear, the sun is bright, and there are no clouds for thousands of miles. Tang Ning held Lu Ruin's small hand and walked down the street, looking here and there. The ever dot changing facial makeup, flexible shadow puppets, kites of different colors, bingtangulu strung in a line, the cries of the salesman and the clapping of the storyteller. The two have never been so leisurely strolling around the town before, they just find everything very interesting. I want to see everything and buy something to eat for two bites. The two of them wandered for a long time and didn't come back until it was dark. They also received quite a generous amount of goods. In addition to buying two new clothes for Lu Ruin, the two of them also bought a lot of interesting little things. Later, Gu Qingqian came over and said, Where have you been today? After taking a good day off, I originally wanted to go play with you. I went shopping in town. Oh, let's go. I'll accompany you to practice boxing. I came up with a move last night that can increase the power of boxing. Gu Qingqian was eager to try. Every night, Tang Ning practices boxing with him. In fact, his martial arts have already surpassed him, but he feels guilty for accepting his teachings, so he deliberately loses to him every time. Forget it today. We have to start a new lesson tomorrow and I want to have a good night off, Tang Ning said, don't do it. I've been thinking about this trick for a long time. Come and try it with me. Okay then. Tang Ning couldn't resist and went out with him to practice boxing. The next day, everyone arrived at the foot of the mountain. After waiting for a while, Shi Ti walked over and said, you are now a member of the caravan. Today, you will start a new lesson and practice the basic martial arts of the caravan, the five elements fist. Watch carefully, I'll demonstrate it once, and then practice with me. This is the crane shing fist, in the five elements fist, which emphasizes the idea of following one's heart and allowing it to flow naturally. Today, let's practice hexing fist first, and now follow me to start. Shi Ti punched and kicked him out, and everyone followed suit, hitting him five times in a row before stopping. You practice on your own according to the action just now. This pattern is not correct. It's not about exerting force on the wrist, it's about exerting force on the entire arm. This copy should be slightly bent when printed. When taking off and landing, the left leg should land first and the body should lean forward. The turning motion should be fast, turn half of the body and then hit, not fully turn. Shi Ti was patrolling around, constantly correcting everyone's erroneous actions. I practiced all morning, had lunch at noon, rested for an hour, and continued in the afternoon. Practice boxing with Gu Qingqian at night, then fall asleep and enter that dream. Time flies, and in the blink of an eye, three or four months have passed. Tang Ning is practicing diligently day after day. On this day, before the sky turned white, Tang Ning woke up from his dream and stared motionless at the roof. Recently, he has felt something unusual in his body, as if something is always wandering around inside him. He didn't know if it was a sequela of that strange dream or if he had problems practicing. He didn't dare to tell anyone, and even kept it a secret from Lu Ruin, so that she wouldn't know and worry. At first, he thought it was a hallucination, and that thing was occasional. He couldn't quite grasp it accurately, but in recent days, he has truly felt it. There was indeed something swimming inside him, 
warm and flowing from head to toe in a cycle. He decided to go ask Shi Ti today to see if there were any problems with his practice. If it wasn't a problem with his practice, he could confirm that it was the dream that caused the problem. After finishing his homework and having dinner in the morning, Tang Ning arrived at the door of Shi Ti's room. After hesitating for a while, he gathered the courage to knock on the door. The door opened and Shi Ti stood inside, looking at him with a puzzled expression. It's you. What's up? Well, Tang Ning nodded, come on, let's talk. Shi Ti looked at his worried expression, as if he had something to do Tang Ning walked in and realized that Qin Luo was also there, along with a man with a beard. What's going on? Let's talk about it now. Shi Ti closed the door and said, Qin Luo and the bearded man looking at him. I haven't been feeling well these days, and I always feel something moving in my body, so I want to ask if there is a problem with my practice. There's something, it's not that I ate it bad. Practicing martial arts shouldn't be too bad, Qin Luo said, I didn't eat anything else, Tang Ning whispered, let me show you if you've caught a cold, the bearded man stood up and grabbed Tang Ning's wrist with one hand, placing his middle finger on his wrist. Tang Ning allowed him to do whatever he wanted. Eh. The bearded man placed his finger on his wrist, exclaimed in surprise, glanced at him, frowned, and after a while closed his eyes again. The frown grew tighter and tighter, with a serious expression. What's wrong? Shi Ti asked the man with a beard didn't answer, and it took him a while to open his eyes. His eyes were wide open, and he looked at Tang Ning incredulously, as if looking at a monster. What's wrong? Qin Luo was also very curious the man with a beard turned to the two and spat out two words. Internal strength. As soon as they said this, the two of them were shocked. Impossible, the two of them said in unison. Qin Luo walked up and grabbed Tang Ning's left wrist, while Shi Ti grabbed Tang Ning's right wrist. After a while, the two of them let go of their hands, and the three of them looked at each other in shock. It's indeed internal power, because I don't know how to control it. Internal power collides randomly in my body, causing the illusion of my body expanding, Qin Luo said first, how does he usually behave, the man with a beard asked, when I first arrived, I had no foundation at all and had a high talent. I had only achieved a slight success in the five elements fist in March and April. That shouldn't be the case either. It's unheard of for internal strength to gather in just a few months. Have you encountered any strange things lately? Or strange people? Or have you eaten strange things? Qin Luo looked at him and asked when he asked this question, Tang Ning immediately thought of the dream, but after a moment of thought, he shook his head and said, No. There's something fishy going on, I'll send someone to report to the gang. You don't have to do any more homework these days, and don't leave. If there's anything wrong, let us know at any time. Qin Luo made a decision, tapped his finger a few times, and pressed his palm on his chest. Tang Ning felt that something moving in his body was moving towards a certain place. Qin Luo withdrew his palm and said, I have forced your internal strength back into the elixir field. You don't know how to control your internal strength yet. Don't practice the five elements fist in the next few days. Oh, Tang Ning nodded. You go back first. Shi Ti spoke up Tang Ning returned to the room and lay on the bed, looking at the roof. Internal force. Gu Qingqian often mentioned it, but he didn't expect it to be such a thing. He speculated that this situation must be related to that dream. Although Shi Ti said he was quite talented and had achieved some success in the Five Elements Fist within a few months, he himself understood that it was definitely not to that extent. UU reading www.uukangshu.net What exactly is that strange dream? Being able to quickly condense one's internal strength, if while Tang Ning was pondering, the door was pushed open, and Lu Ruan walked in, locked the door, climbed onto the bed, got into his arms, and rubbed her face against him. Tang Ning hugged her weak and boneless body and said, Ru Ru, I have something to tell you. Lu Ruan nodded after listening, twisted her body, changed her comfortable position, 
and squeezed into his arms again. Tang Ning hugged him tighter, and Lu Ruan lifted her head and kissed him twice at the corner of his mouth. Her face was pressed against his, and she closed her eyes to rest. In the evening, Gu Qingqian came over and wondered why Tang Ning didn't do his homework in the afternoon. Tang Ning was just about to ask him about his internal strength. Do you know how long it usually takes for the body to condense internal energy? It's hard to say, at least three to four or four to five years, at most eight to nine years, or more than ten years, which is also closely related to the cultivation of martial arts. This is very complex, by the way, why didn't you go this afternoon? I went to find Shi Ti, and he said that my internal strength had already condensed and told me not to go. Don't joke anymore. Are you serious? It's impossible. Are you serious? Gu Qingqian suddenly took a swift step and pulled at Tang Ning's sleeve, asking, I don't know if it's true. A few days ago, I felt something swimming in my body, warm and warm. They said it was internal strength. Gu Qingqian stared at him with an incredulous expression, and Tang Ning was also confused. Chapter 10 Apprenticeship You are listening at NovelFull.audio Two days later, the gang sent someone down. Is that him? Tang Ning arrived at Shi Tiai's room, where a tall and stern black-clad man looked at him and said, it's actually the man's surname Qi who brought him here earlier. Hm Qin Luo nodded and said, he has only been here in July or August, and his internal strength has already condensed. I think something is suspicious, so I reported it to the leader. Follow me. The man stood up and walked out. Tang Ning followed behind Qin Luo and whispered, Where are you going? Help me meet you. I'm going with Ru Ru. What? Qin Luo hesitated for a moment, then reacted with a hint of amusement, saying, Go see the guild leader first, let's talk about other things tomorrow. Tang Ning stopped and shook his head, It's not possible. Qin Luo looked at him with a determined and uncompromising expression and smiled, All right then. Hurry up. Tang Ning quickly ran to the accounting room, and the man surnamed Qi saw him run away quickly. He stopped and looked at Qin Luo. I went to pick up his little daughter. In. Law. Ah. Lu Ruin was lying on the table holding an account book for reconciliation when Tang Ning suddenly pushed open the door and walked straight to her side, holding her small hand and walking back, What are you doing? Mr. Min next to him was startled and asked, Something's up. Tang Ning didn't have much time to say before leaving the door. Ru Ru, we're leaving here. A person just arrived, the one who sent us last time, and now they're taking us out. Tang Ning took her hand and ran slowly, saying. Lu Ruan kept nodding. The two of them arrived at the foot of the mountain, where Qin Luo and a man surnamed Qi had been waiting. Seeing him arrive, the two of them flipped over and mounted their horses. Qin Luo pulled Tang Ning and Lu Ruan onto their backs. The horses' hooves were like the wind, and after more than an hour, the four of them arrived at the caravan. A man surnamed Qi and Qin Luo led the two of them inside. As he passed through the sixth gate, the man surnamed Qi casually called for a maid and glanced at Lu Ruan, saying, Take this little girl to rest well. Lu Ruan tightly held on to Tang Ning's hand, and Tang Ning whispered, You go eat something first, I'll be there in a moment. Lu Ruan reluctantly followed that maid. Passing through two more doors, the three of them entered the main hall. Tang Ning stood behind the two and looked up. There were five people sitting upright in the hall, with Chui Yilin and Chui Gang leader sitting in the main seat, whom he had seen before. Master, uncle, here we are. The man surnamed Qi bowed to everyone, well, Chui Yilin nodded and stood up in front of Tang Ning. He looked at him and said with a smile, indeed, he has excellent bones. No wonder he can condense his internal strength in such a short time. Although the bone is good, it can condense internal strength within a few months, which is quite sensational. It's probably not that simple, said Chui Yilin alone behind him, the path of martial arts has its own destiny. 
are there still few strange people and events in the martial arts world? Anyway, this is his own chance, said another person, what is your name and where is your home? Chui Yilin looked at Tang Ning with a gentle smile on his face, my name is Tang Ning and I come from Tang Lu village, Anning County. Why did you come to the caravan? My parents were killed by thieves and came here begging with them. Fortunately, I met the prefect and it was Uncle Wang Di Ho who brought me here. Oh, I remember. One day, Brother Wang entrusted me with two children, but I didn't expect it to be you. Since that's the case, Tang Ning, are you willing to worship me as your teacher? I'm willing, Tang Ning nodded and said, congratulations to senior brother for accepting another genius. This son has quite high qualifications. If he can receive guidance from his senior brother, he will definitely become a great master in the future, and he may be a great master again. The people behind said one after another. Someone, serve tea. Chui Yilin was also very happy. Give the tea to the leader and call out to the master, Qin Luo whispered beside him Tang Ning took tea from a maid's plate and walked up to kneel on the ground, offering tea and saying, Master. Chui Yilin took a sip of tea and put it down. Tang Ning, since you have already worshipped under my sect, you will become my disciple of Chui Yilin from now on. You must remember that when we travel in the martial arts world, we should prioritize chivalry, and when we encounter injustice, we should draw our swords to help each other. We must not bully others with our might. Yes. Today is just an introductory ceremony. In three days, I will gather the members of the gang and formally worship my sect. This is your senior brother Chi Yunfei. You can ask him for advice when I am not around. Senior brother Chi. Tang Ning turned around and saluted him. Yun Fei, you need to take care of your junior brother more in the future. Yes, master. These are all your senior uncles, this is senior uncle Mo Qian Shan, this is senior uncle Yin Xianjing, this is senior uncle Dong Hai, and this is senior uncle Ho Yutang. Tang Ning bowed one by one. By the way, I remember brother Wang brought two children with him that day, and there was also a little girl who came with you. How is she now? She is my daughter dot in dot law and came with me. Chui Yilin was taken aback for a moment and then burst into laughter, with several people beside him also smiling. At such a young age, I must be a charming figure in the future. Senior brother, this is different from you. Mo Qianshan smiled and said, All right, you go down and rest first. Chui Yilin waved his hand and asked him to step back, Luor, you don't have to worry about those children's affairs. Let's go to Shangha County first. There is a batch of high-dot-quality horses from Wuguo over there. You can go and receive them, including a pair of white jade snow horses that Prince Qingha likes. Don't make any mistakes, Yin Zhengxian said, yes, master. Take a good day off and set off tomorrow. Tang Ning walked out of the door and asked a maid where Lu Ruin was, so she went straight ahead. Ru Ru, do you know what they're looking for me for? As soon as they entered the room, Tang Ning couldn't wait to speak up Lu Ruin held his hand with a small hand and shook her head. Looking at his happy expression, she was also very happy, do you remember the last time Uncle Wang brought us here? The leader of Chui Yilin's gang has already taken me as an apprentice, and in three days, we will officially announce the entire gang. In the future, not only can I learn better martial arts, but my monthly salary can also increase significantly. Tang Ning sat down and held her in his arms, after the salary increase, we can save more money and buy a big house in the future without having to live in someone else's place. Lu Ruin looked at him with big eyes and gestured with her fingers for a while. Well, we should be living here for now. What are you saying about the things in the house? Let's just leave them there and buy them in a few days. However, Ching Qian doesn't know we're here yet. Also, Uncle Min, I don't know you're here. It's time to go back and talk to them, especially Uncle and Aunt Min. Let's go back and buy something to see them. Tang Ning was talking to her, and at noon, a maid brought the food. Soon, Qi Yunfei came over. Senior Brother Qi. 
Tang Ming opened the door and saw it was him, respectfully bowing. Qi Yunfei nodded and walked in, Tang Junior Brother, you will officially join the Master's sect in three days. Not only will there be brothers of all sizes within the caravan, but also some friends of the Masters in the martial arts world will come. The caravan is a prestigious and upright sect, and the etiquette is indispensable. Do you know about the apprenticeship ceremony? Tang Ning shook his head and said, Please advise, senior brother. Qi Yunfei took out a book from his arms and handed it to Tang Ning, saying, This is the Book of Rites. You need to read it carefully, and first read through the section on the apprenticeship ceremony to avoid making jokes in front of the guests. Yes. And this one. Qi Yunfei took out a wooden plaque and said, You are not a formal disciple of the caravan yet. You are not allowed to enter or exit the gang at will. If someone blocks you, hand the plaque to him, but do not give it to him. It is best not to go out these days, as the master may summon you at any time. Tang Ning took the wooden plaque and said, I've taken note. Thank you, senior brother. If there is anything, just go to Xi Yuan and find me. Qi Yunfei stood up and left. For the next few days, Tang Ning would only read the book of rites given to him by Qi Yunfei in his room every day, occasionally wandering around the gang with Lu Ruan. On the day of my apprenticeship, it was indeed a bustling and bustling gathering of guests. Heroes from various rivers and lakes in the Chu state came to congratulate him, and almost all the external disciples in the caravan rushed back to offer gifts. In addition, some friendly gentry and influential figures were also present, and the banquet was arranged at ten tables. Tang Ning was naturally the central figure of this feast, but fortunately, after reading the Book of Rites in the past few days, his behavior can be considered appropriate. However, there was one thing that was quite awkward. He completely forgot what happened on that day, he did forget, completely forgotten, only remembered being very busy. As for who I met and what I said, I can't remember at all. The reason is simple, he drank too much. Chui Yilin's friends are mostly heroes in the martial arts world, and there are many alcoholics. Tang Ning naturally cannot refuse to drink in such occasions. In addition, Chui Yilin does not stop him, so he drinks one cup after another. He has never drunk before when I woke up, my head felt very heavy. I looked around and confirmed that it was in my own room. Then, when I looked to the side, Lu Ruin was facing away from him and didn't know what she was busy with. Ruru, Tang Ning shouted. Lu Ruin turned around and saw him wake up. She quickly brought the pastry and fruit tray to him and poured a cup of tea to his mouth. Tang Ning wanted to get up, but found her body numb and soft, unable to exert any strength. Lu Ruin saw that he wanted to start, so she quickly pressed him with her hand to prevent him from getting up. Tang Ming opened his mouth and drank a cup of tea in one gulp. He did feel a dry mouth and tongue. After drinking tea, Lu Ruin fed him pastries and fruits. After eating and drinking a lot, Tang Ning felt a little stronger in his body. It was only then that he realized he was lying naked under the blanket without clothes on. The moonlight outside the window shone on the ground, and Lu Ruin tidied up the fruit tray and tea, blew out the lights, got into the blanket, and squeezed into Tang Ning's arms, rubbing his face against him. Ru Ru, it seems like I've had a lot of alcohol. Why is there such a strong smell on my body that I've also got you covered in it? Lu Ruin hugged him tightly, turned her head, kissed him several times with her small mouth on the face, and looked at him with big watery eyes. Tang Ning stretched out, not very concerned that she was not wearing any clothes. The two of them slept with each other every day, and besides, she was already his wife. How long have I slept? It's been a day, right? Lu Ruin extended three fingers. Ah! I slept for three days. So long. Tang Ning was surprised, never expecting to sleep for a whole three days and three nights. Lu Ruin nodded. Tang Ning hugged her tightly and said, This time, I promise I won't drink so much alcohol in the future, even if it's a marriage. 